it, people can know it. It's just you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm uh, just, yeah. I'm just saying. I, I don't want to, I don't want to use your slave name if that's not what you're comfortable with. If you want Tomaton to stick with the, the gamers, we can, we can do that yeah, instead. Just, you know, do some, do some uh, branding. You know, for the games. Okay, 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 okay. Well, all right. Well, let's let's go ahead and get to it. So, welcome everybody to the 74th episode of the Made in Dreams podcast. I'm your host, Mighty Vicious, joined today by Jamie James, aka Darth Plagueis, fresh off of his illness recovery after missing last week's episode like a scrub. You, like you a got scrub. any? Yeah, you got anything to say for yourself? Yeah, I had no voice. So it I had no voice. This, it wouldn't have been a very good <laughs> like, with me talking like this. Like, hi guys, welcome to the podcast. Uh, I mean, what I sounded like. I, I mean, some people, some people are willing to put it all on the line to bring the people what they need. And I mean, it just didn't seem like you were there with me last week. And I have video footage that says you weren't. I, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So, <laughs> but we're joined today by Tomaton, creator of Chaotic Good and Mandalorian Mandalorian Conviction, and. Uh, Introduce yourself to the Dreams audience. Tell us a bit uh, about yourself, your Dreams origin, if you will. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, I mean, so my, my name's TJ Ortomaton. Um, I have been a video game fan for years. Uh, I think I've really fell in love with them come like Ocarina of Time for the N64. I think that kind of uh, solidified. I was just like, this is amazing. And, and the storytelling in these games is, is next level. So ever since then, I was hooked. I think. And then, like, you know, the 360 PS3 era, I think that a lot of, you know, for the medium, like, a lot of advances were done there and a lot of interest. So I, I kind of fell in love with just, like, the idea of it as a medium and, like, what people were doing for it. Because, like, you know, they haven't had their Citizen Kane. You know, the, the rules and the laws of design are, are still being written. So it's just an exciting, exciting place to be. At the time, I never thought I could make a video game. So, I you know, I, I was just kind of intellectually, like, interested in it. But, um, but yeah, then... Um, when it comes to dreams, I, 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 you know, I hadn't heard about it. I, I just bought, I, I'm usually an Xbox guy, so don't, don't, you know, don't, you know, at me about it, but, uh, I, I, no, I'm just but <laughs> I always had, I always had a PlayStation, uh, for the exclusives cause they are incredible. So, um, and then I bought a PSVR on a whim and I was just like, I put the Xbox away for months. I just was crushing everything on PSVR and, and, and enjoying it so much. And I was on the subreddit there, and so, and people were, were raving about this upcoming game, Dreams, and how it's going to be this endless content for VR and everything. So that's how it got onto my radar. And then, you know, someone posted something when it released, the day it released. I was like, oh, let's check it out. Um, and I didn't really realize what was possible in there at that time. I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll make something fun, you know, like a little mini game. I have a band, um, so I was like, and we were re recording an album, so I was like, Maybe I'll make like a playable version of my album, you know, so I started working on that and then I realized I can't import music. So I kind of scrapped that idea. <laughs> um, I, I'm still waiting for that to there to be a good import option for that because my, my band, Nobody's Sheriff, check us out on Spotify. I would like to I would like to make a playable, you know, like not like a. Uh, not like I don't want to just make a music video. I want to make like a playable level with the music kind of going on in the background. So nice. Um, so I scrapped that um and got to work on it but but at the time i realized like how you uh, you can link together scenes and i was just like you can make a game like you can just make a game so then i started working on kind of a uh like a kind of a first person um melee game because I, I feel like no one's really conquered like first person melee with you know be all end all version of that so i was, I was making that for a while and i just maxed out the thermo i just crushed it and, I, and it was just going at such a sluggish pace. I was just like, I can't do this. I'm going to wait for the PS5 to, to readdress this one. So grabbed that. And at the time I was falling in love with the Mandalorian. Um, and I'd always loved, um, cause I was airing at the time and I'd always loved, um, Splinter Cell Conviction. It's kind of the, uh, the redheaded stepchild of the Splinter Cell franchise, but <laughs> I think it's a very good game. I think that the controls in that game are, I, I wish, I wish they put that on like a John Wick game or, you know, like, like that control scheme is so good that I just wish they put it on something other than Splinter Cell because people were just not receptive to it on Splinter Cell. Hmm. So I was like, so let's do it. You know, I, so I, I took that control scheme and put it on the Mandalorian because watching the Mandalorian, I was thinking like, I see, I see this 
translating perfectly, just like it would be great for John Wick. It would be great for Mando, the way he fights and stuff. So um, so I got to work on on building that and, you know, the, the kind of the tagging and shooting and all that. And then I got into the whole cinematic stuff. Like, I, I, I like, studied the episode of, of the, I think it's episode three of The Mandalorian. And for, shot for shot, like, Deborah Cho uh, was my, Deborah Chow was my, um, you know, like, be all and all Bible. I was watching the episode doing shot for shot. You know, I think on Reddit I posted a, uh, a comparison of each shot. And it's pretty close, as much as I could do. Um, and, uh, thanks to all the dreamers who had all these great Star Wars assets, cause I just, it's so easy to just kind of plug those in and, and there's already an incredible Mando, uh, model. And I got in touch with this guy, Gavin on there who made the, the, the Razor Crest, I think it's called the Razor Crest model. And it's, so it was all there and it all kind of came together and I was really, really happy with that. But I was nervous about doing, you know, IP that was not mine and could be taken down at any mm. moment. So after that, I started working on um, I, an unreleased thing. I had like this, I wanted to do something in VR. Um, so I had like a kind of like you take the moves, you know, and throw one away. And then you have the one move, which was like a mage's staff that I had programmed mm -hmm. to like be able to like kind of hit people with it and cast spells and stuff. But uh I kind of scrapped that because the player base, you know, I'm just, I'm not trying to make a game for 10 people that have a move and a VR headset. So yeah. I, that's kind of on the back burner. Um, but um, th so then I started making chaotic good, which I just kind of wanted to make something like a story that's original, um, e emotional, you know, kind of, and, and fun and humorous and stuff. So uh, I got to work on that. I worked for that for about a year. Um, uh, like my my wife was pregnant and and then she had her baby so i had a lot of sleepless nights uh where i was taking care of the baby and just just plugging away at making chaotic good and it came out recently and you know to you know a warm reception ish <laughs> so so uh so yeah and here we are so um with 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 chaotic good like generally my 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 guiding principles in in making a game is like emotion and immersion like Mm. if it's not emotion if it doesn't draw something out of you it's worthless it's nothing and and immersion i'm just i'm just a sucker for immersion i think like i think the greatest and 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 like directorial control like i don't know why games aren't leaning more into like giving us especially with you know just twitch streaming and that like why they don't give us more tools to show you know to like frame things well and and present something cool you know as you're playing it like when I'm playing, I don't, I can't, I can't stream because I, I can't concent, I can't do that two things at once. But, but like when I play alone, I'm such a nerd about it. I, I like, you know, I do slow pans around my character. I walk everywhere. You know, I'm all about the immersion. So, um, and, and like I think that, that some of the greatest like innovations of gaming recently was like Red Dead Redemption 2's cinematic cam, like when you hold the back button or the, mm. you know. And and it, it gives you all these incredible shots, and and they always have that in GTA, like you could do it on cars and stuff. But like in 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 Red Dead Redemption, you can do it anytime. You can walk around, and they have these all these big, you know, beautiful cinematic shots as you're playing. And like it, it's awkward controlling it, but it's worth it. You know, it's very cool. And then an, an underrated game that I love is uh, Mad Max. Um, I highly recommend it, checking that out. They had this weird. I don't think they even did it on purpose, but in Mad Max, you can. Um, they have a cinematic. They have the photo mode, and you can just play in the photo mode. So it allowed you to like kind of like get close in on the character, which oh, I prefer, cool. like kind of a close in thing, and like get rid of the HUD, and like it, to the point they even have a feature I've never seen before. A second player, I think even online, or maybe it's just a second controller, can be can film you playing, and like they are the oh. camera. Wow, and you know, so like that. I was so I've always anyway. I've had a fascination with like not only immersion, but like being able to direct a beautiful game live. You know, like mm. well, you know, so like I hate HUDs and I hate anything like that. So I always try to get as minimal with that stuff. Sometimes to my detriment, you know, I watch you know people be like, "Where do I go now?" Because I don't like putting directions in things. So um, anyway, um, so those are kind of my guiding principles in, in designing, just like kind of strip the HUD, try to make every shot look cool. So in Chaotic Good, you know, they have the, the tight camera, like God of War, but then when you fight, you gotta get, you need a little more space to see and stuff like that. So I get really into that, you know, the presentation of it all. Um, and then, you know, 
where emotion and immersion don't work, I just try and inject humor into everything because I think, you know, games are a little too dreary these days and they get all very samey without a little fun. So I like colors and, and, and humor, you know. Yeah, I was going to say anyway, both games uh, both games seem to like really prioritize the storytelling. Now, of course, with Mandalorian being that you're going from the episode, like that interested me because everyone knows you bring up movies, you bring up cinematics. That's that's <laughs> what that's what gets me smiling in the morning. But I re- I really did like how in uh I would say the Mandalorian more so, but also in Chaotic Good how you seem to like use the camera to kind of give a nod to the player like where exactly you wanted them to go but it wasn't like a shining beacon yeah out it, it, like, not forced or anything, you know yeah. it was like when you're when you're planting the charge on the outer wall trying to get to the child like how you have the instructions on the wall by the camera but the player is off in the distance so it's like they have to get to that spot i really i really enjoyed the pieces like that and yes i could tell where it was just like you had fun with it as far as the humor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. That of whole sequence of, of infiltrating the base was like I, I did have a lot of fun with that because it is really shot for shot of the show, but you're playing it, and 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 somehow I was able to, for the most part, guide people into doing. It. It's not always perfect because again, like I said, I've seen some Twitch streamers get lost and be like, "Oh, this is this sucks," you know, and turn it off. Yeah. But um, but it's worth it. I don't care. I wanted I, the, for the people it works for. <laughs> I wanted to work for them. So. Um, and I can't take credit for that, for the text on the wall, though, because that is from the Mandalorian conviction. So that was kind of a, an homage to to that as well. Well, I was wondering, if I before you broke down like you're, you know, going into making the music uh, or trying to do like a music or a video game that goes along as a, you know, with the soundtrack from your band. I was going to ask, what did you come to dreams for? Because it seemed to me that you were way more into like film than these projects would suggest because it's it, i would have thought it was backwards like i would have thought it was the other way had you not said it because like i came for, to make a movie yeah like you came to more to make a movie and then was like oh games because it's just so many things within it that are just like that's very cinematically done like you know, just even the way you tell your uh, the the beginning of the story in Chaotic Good, where it's really heavily focused on the story. And part of me when I was playing it and guys, guys, for those that don't know, I came out of my my dreams fast, just long enough to play through his games. And then I turned it right back off because the dream shaping section was calling me. So I'm not back yet. <laughs> I'm not back yet. But in the beginning of Chaotic Good, there was like, there was a part for me where like when it started getting to the gameplay, I was like, but I, but I, I want him to continue telling me this story. Like, <laughs> like it, it's like I there was a there was a real disconnect where I was just like the animation was done in such a way that it didn't feel like I don't know like every time it switched from being the story to like. Your cam, like you, the the player cam, where it's like you can go. I was just sitting there. I was, I was like, just, just tell me more of it. I, I, I love it. <laughs> so yeah. And did you do the animation in both? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, I think uh, that's part of, part of the. I think the the warm, the lukewarm reception of my games is because it it, it does walk a weird line where it's like. People, some people really like the cinematic stuff. Some people are just like, where's the gameplay? Let's get to the gameplay. And, you know, no one knows who I am, so no one knows to trust. Just, like, just play through it, and it gets yeah. to where you want it to go. But, like, because it is, you know, I think people turn it on, and they're like, oh, this is a video. I'm trying to play a game, you know, and then because it's three minutes of cutscene or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so, and in terms of, like, my, I don't have any kind of filmmaking background or anything, but just, like, the video games, it's like, I come to all art with, I love art and I come to it both from just the, the emotion and loving what it is and what it's saying. And the other side of it just being like the intellectual, like how, the, how did they get, how did they do this? So, well, while I don't have any film training or anything, like I do care about that stuff and pay attention to like, and again, it is really helpful with the Mandalorian. It's just kind of a training thing, like Deborah Chow's, you know, framing and all that stuff. I, I you know, just copying it. It was very helpful, and and you know the the 
the field of view and the you know the the oh, sorry the uh you know the aperture and all that yeah. kind of stuff just using a lot of those tools you know it's all very helpful so um so yeah i try to do my best but it but it's just because like i appreciate those medium that, that media and uh i i try to do it justice but it's not like my main interest i just want to make emotional fun games that people enjoy <laughs> well you fooled me because i was like <laughs> i can see where this is going i was like this is and the music the, the music too i mean so i also tried to copy the soundtrack as close as i could and then someone had made an incredible version of this of the theme that i've tagged on at the end so that that was not me um and then in chaotic good uh the music i tried to you know i did that all myself except for there, except for in the fight scenes, and this kind of speaks more to the also to the immersion and the cinematic nature of it all, and the inter in, interactiveness of it. Um, in the fight scenes, there are certain things that will trigger, uh, like a like a beat, so it'll make it like a modern action sequence. Um, that I didn't write those beats, so those beats I pulled off the Dreamiverse, and then I wrote like orchestral stuff on top of it. Mm -hmm. So in certain fights, like um, if you do certain things, it'll kick in the beat. And or or like if you hold the the camera button or something, it'll turn on the beat, you know, in certain things. Yeah. So it's like it happens at key moments. So, you know, it, I guess it would be more exciting when those because you can't plan, you know, after four bars, something cool will happen to bring in. The, you know, you can't plan that. So you got to kind of, you know, yeah. uh, program it in there to come at a natural time. So there's a little bit of that in all the fight scenes. Had you ever built in anything before you got to dreams? Nope. Um, I have no, no, tra and the, my most, uh, you know, training in like logic was I, for my math requirement in college, I took, uh, like a Java course and mm -hmm. I learned how to program like a stoplight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was helpful in the sense of like, you know, I understood like, you know, what like not gates were and like, if then statements can, it, you know, mm -hmm. like it, it, you kind of, it kind of translates a little bit. So I just knew how like kind of computers thought a little bit and it helped when I was trying to learn the logic. So how long did it take you to make Chaotic Good then from start to finish? If And I'm assuming everything was done by yourself, right? Yeah, um, except uh, no no modeling. All the all the modeling, except mm, for like course, yeah. tweaking models. You know, I mm. tweaked some of the models and stuff, but like I pulled everything from the Dreamiverse. So thank you to all those people who did all that wonderful, you know, legwork to make what I could do happen. But, um, but uh yeah, I did. I did everything myself. And uh, sorry, I'm, I think I'm blanking on your question. The uh, uh, just how long it took from start to finish to, to create chaos. It took about a year. Um, at where I, I probably stopped. I think I had a a burnout. You know, for like three months, where I just kind of was playing other games and stuff. Um, but so, but uh, overall, about a year, and it was a very hectic year. We we bought a house, had a baby. You know, so it was wow, like. So yeah, a lot of stuff happened in that year as well to still yeah, pull it which off. Which kind of worked <laughs> in my favor. Yeah, I mean, it kind of worked in my favor just because those sleepless nights were nice. And I just had the baby resting on me and I was, mm. I was, I was making the game. So <laughs> in some ways it helped. Well, as far as the... Um, uh, like I wanted to point out the animation that was going in, 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 especially in chaotic good, uh, but definitely in certain places in Mandalorian. Did you do the animation for that? Like yourself, or was that part of the puppets that were brought in? Uh, no, no, I did all the animation. Well, um, that's really well done. Yeah. Like really I, well done. I, I love the facial rigging in Chaotic Good. Like most rigging that's touted within the Dreamiverse is like a realistic style of rigging, which is amazing. I'm not talking down on anybody because you do what I can't and I love you for it. Hopefully I can work with you. But like being that I'm not an animator, I've been tossing around the more like stylized rigging ideas. And I love the more Pixar-ish eyes and like eyebrows, eyelids, like that that you used in Chaotic Good. Like, and... You actually showed me because I've been nervous about Clev Trev's animated mouth uh, asset. I, I, is that I, what that was on those little kids? Is that what you're yes, talking about? yes, that's what's, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. on those little. I've been worried about how that would look and whether or not it because I find it hard to make it a flush. But the way you did it in Chaotic Good was like really, really good. Like it really sold me on it like i've been thinking about building like my own version of it with like more mouths because i don't understand any of the logic of how it works really but right, right. yeah like i just wanted to make sure i, I brought that up because i really really liked the more like 
like I said, simplified Pixar-ish type look to how everything was. It was very yeah, personal. Yeah. So those, I mean, those assets, I think like the, the dad's head and I think the merchant, I don't know if you got that far, but like there's like kind yeah. of a, like a traveling merchant type guy. Um, I think those are, I'm not sure if they both are made by Southerner, um, but definitely the dad's head is. And like those, and so I can't take credit for the art style because I, I saw that art style and was like, I, these, I love, I love this. I got, I got to use this stuff, <laughs> but I did have to um, like tweak it. So like, cause the mouths didn't move and, you know, so I had to go in there and, and cut the head in half and kind of, you know, like make it so it could you kind of game with game it so it could like talk well. Mm, and, yeah. um, it, it was just lucky that they had kind of the things I needed and I, you know, the eyebrows are separated so you can just kind of move them around. And so I had to play with it, but it was, but I, but I did, yeah, it did come out pretty good, I think. So, um, so yeah. And then those, and then those mouth things, I, I saw something on Twitter I forget who it was. Someone, somebody was, I think maybe, maybe, maybe it was Tap Giles or somebody was talking about animating a mouth, and they were like, "I just plug it into the audio file, you know, the audio waveform, mm -hmm. and it, it, it meant." And I was just like, "Shit!" I was just, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I was just like, I was just like, "It's genius," because I, I'm in there like meticulously, you know, putting the keyframes in there, and <laughs> mm. like, and then I was like, "Oh, that's actually very smart. I should have done that for at least some of the characters." <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, whatever. You live and you learn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really the journey of dreams is like basically doing something, being really proud of it. And then finding out that the like 40 hours it took you to pull it off, it could have been done in five <laughs> minutes. If you, right, right. <laughs> if you just, if you just if, knew how to do it, if only it you been knew. Yeah. 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 But that so, cartoon mouth is great because they have in the microchip, they have kind of the vowel sounds and everything and the keyframes next to them. So I just pulled those keyframes and plugged them in. So that was actually very easy. Yeah, I've been I've been looking at designs or at the the sculpts I've made for characters, and I have them all with that mouth. And I'm just like, <laughs> but is it going to work, or do I need to go into other things? Like, there's the other way people do it, where like you have a bunch of different heads sculpted for the different sounds and facial, and then you can basically like hot swap out the frames to make it so that it moves almost like a fluid. Well, not almost, it does move like a fluid animation. It's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, I've been looking at that Been looking at, you know, how people like, uh, uh, Kowitzer and, uh, uh, Willow the Bob, how they actually cut the face completely up and then yeah. make it so that you can move it. Crazy in stuff. Crazy stuff. Great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and like it, in um, in uh, Noguchi's Bell, like that, like the the where the where they separate the face is so smart because it's, it's like almost insane. seamless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, it's which... so so well done. Like you just like to look at it and just watch it, you just think, oh yeah, well it's just fully rigged. But when they actually break it apart and you see how all the muscles is separate and how the lips is done and the cheekbones and everything, right. and how the nose has to move up a little when they say a certain like type yeah, of yeah. word and stuff. Crazy, like, attention yeah. to detail. <laughs> and like, oh my God. That's why I never stop singing the praises of Willow the Bob because mm. she truly is amazing at at the animation of it all. Like She's it, just mastered like the human face. She just yeah. knows how a human face works in and out perfectly and yeah. just recreated that in dreams. It's incredible. Yeah. So um I, I still I still find it interesting that like like it makes sense that you came from music and therefore like evoking emotion and immersion is like your, you know, like the cornerstone of your creative process. It, it's, I don't know. It, 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 I still can't get over how it didn't go from film to, yeah, like, you was, to you game. You were certain on that, wasn't you? Yeah, you was, like, I really, really was. On that. Yeah. I really <laughs> I mean, was because really certain decisions, you. like you obviously <laughs> have a, 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 you obviously care enough to where, while that may not be your main focus, that's a, you know, you have a passion for it, especially when explaining the things you like about games. Or it's like, it seems like the more they give you the ability to direct, the <laughs> the happier you well, are with the happen. game. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's yeah, just yeah. like, yeah, it, it just it really does blow my mind because I was I was really ready to go in. I was I would be like, what's your favorite I mean, movies? It, what do you watch? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love movies. I, you know, I love everything about movies. I, 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 from from a from a intellectual to a just a fan, you know, like, but um, but I, 
I, I love the reason I love dreams and I, I enjoyed making the game so much is it really does. Even if I don't have any kind of professional training in these things, they all are interests of me, music and movies and games and mm. stuff. So, uh, you know, be able, being able to bring all of those together in such a seamless tool is just, you know, you can't ask for anything more than that. So. You, you, you really can't. You really can't. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something I'm going to need you to work on real, real quick. Real quick, all right. I'm gonna need you to delete them, uh, them flying imps from the beginning of, uh, of uh, chaotic good because I'm gonna tell you, them yeah. things it's embarrassing how many times I died to those things. I'm I, like, yo, I, I've had less trouble with the grunts of Elden Ring than I have with these. <laughs> like, I thought I was I wanna, losing my brain. I want to address that because, because partially, but it, it is on purpose, it's working as intended. But oh, I don't explain anything to anybody, you know, because just, it just takes time to, like, put yeah. in the loading screen tips and stuff. So I just ignored it. But those things will get you if, if you touch them. If, if you touch them at all, they'll grab you. Um, if you. If you hit them, there's a delay of, like, three seconds where they can't grab you. But just stay away from them. So that's, that's that. Use your special move because that kills everything in one shot. Um, and then for the skeletons, if you hit them several times, if you hit them, like, four times in three mm -hmm. seconds they'll grab you. So don't do that. Just go slow down, <laughs> take your time. And it, <laughs> yeah. But if you hit them four times, they will grab you. And it's, and I've watched many a Twitch streamer just be super frustrated with that. I probably should have put a tip in there or something, but it is what it is. You know? No, no, no. It, it, I mean, real talk. I was just joking. I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to change your game, <laughs> but I was just like, I have to bring up these things because they are wrecking me. And I just, <laughs> and I was just like, I can't be this bad, but apparently I am. I'm just that bad i, no, I don't, I don't it's, learn I, apparently. I, when i play it when i play it i still get caught by them i mean it's just you know it is it, it's how they that's how they it's designed to be i mean you kill them as soon as they do that so like yeah. they can't really get you too badly but um yeah i mean it's funny because you put in to make I, I was very proud that i was able to make that work you know because the way that functions is there's actually always an imp on you um it like in it, you know invisible mm. and then the mm. cameras are attached to the puppets so like when it grabs you it spins around your head and you know but you know, for the bite and stuff so when i got that to work i was like hell yeah this looks great i'm very happy with it and then you put it into player hand, you know same same kind of evolution would happen when i got the the tag and shoot to work in mandalorian but you watch people do the tag and shoot in mandalorian they're delighted they're like hell yeah this is such a great mechanic Another uh, equally difficult mechanic in Chaotic Good for me to pull off that I'm very proud of. People are like, like this game sucks. Like I hate this. <laughs> you know, so you gotta empower your players. Like you know, the best mechanic ever. If it's if it if it takes health away from your player, they're gonna be mad about it. So I guess that's gotta bite that bullet. Indeed. So, <laughs> um, other th other than the imps, like for Chaotic Good. Is this an original story, or were you were you flying by the seat of your pants story wise, or were you like, is this something you have written up? Um, I mean, I have kind of a general outline for how it would go, you know, if I if I continued it. Um, I uh, I didn't really have. I just know I knew I knew I wanted to make kind of a Zelda after after making Mandalorian. Uh, the way I had to do the shooting in that is is bad it's a it's a patchwork job like I, like there's very glitchy things going on with the shooting um due to just how i had to do it basically because of the laser bolts i couldn't do like kind of a, a hit scan thing um and it and because i didn't want them to move too slowly i had to do some tricky stuff that doesn't always work that well so that after all that and and it has to work with like there has to be walls on all sides the way it works i can't have an outdoor area because if you point up at the sky, he just breaks. So, um, so I had to. So after all that, I was like, I want to just do something easy, like no more shooting, you know, no more lasers. So I wanted to do a, a Zelda, you know, esque hack and slash kind of thing with the with the sword and everything. So I was like, so that was where that started. I was just like, let's just take it easy and do a cute little Zelda game. And uh, and then from there, I was like, okay, but I want to make it emotional. I want to make it a good story. Um, and always family is always the go-to with that family or pets or, or like, you know, art and some like, like overcoming musical problems, you know, those are the movies that get me like, you know, or like sports or something, you know, something like that's intrinsically emotional. And, you know, so I settled on family and, um, I wanted to like, just get right up with chaotic good as the kind of the theme. I, 
when I wrote when I write songs, I like to start with a complicated emotion. So like, you know, and 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 like kind of the the verse kind of tells the story. The hook kind of brings it back to what the whole overall thing is. And the first second verse might tell another story. The bridge plays devil's advocate. You know, like kind of like, is this right? Is you know, and then bring it home with the with the chorus. So I kind of took the same thing with this. I wanted like I thought of chaotic good would be like a nice thing that gamers would understand and be like, what does that mean? What is this about? And then kind of tried to like encapsulate that in a storyline that had to do with family, that was based in family because um, because that's that's intrinsically that that just carries a lot of weight. Like people will care off the bat, you know, if you're talking about your kids and stuff. So um as cynical as that sounds it, it <laughs> uh um but uh so i started there so like kind of the the main character the little kid is kind of um the, his whole thing is is dealing with you know a world it's kind of and it kind of makes some political statements in terms of like the uh you know the industrial prison complex and that kind of thing um if you really read into it but it but it's um he's kind of just dealing with like a world that where the law isn't really right. You know, it's like you got to stay true to your heart and do what you think is good, not necessarily what you're told is good. So that's why he's, he kind of encapsulates chaotic good in that sense. And then his counterpart is the, the black shadow boy who, um, if you know, I'm not, I don't want to give away too much about the, oh, the no. plot or bit or but he kind of represents another side of chaotic good in that he, his kind of, Thing, he 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 does good by doing bad, you know. Like his his that's his whole thing, and he's also very clumsy. So his chaotic good kind of comes in the in the kind of the uh, Jar Jar Binks side of it too. So like you know, <laughs> he's trying you... to do good, but he kind of messes up along the way. So how did you come up with the voice for the for the shadow version? <laughs> I wanted something really alien sounding or really, but like not, but it but I can't be too alien because it's a fantasy, you know. So. So he's just, so I'm just speaking bad Google Translate Latin. Um, and then I like lowered my voice a lot. And then Google Translate the, Latin. Not, That's yeah, I'm sure there are Latin majors out there being just like, oh my God, like That's what is brilliant. he doing? But yeah. but yeah, um, and then I just kind of pitched the voice down a couple notches too and put an echo on it. So that's that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> And then, right. and then and then that, that changes along the way because I didn't want to do that forever, um, and I wanted to you know kind of bring more of his character out so that you know kind of changes along as the game progresses. Word. Well, what's next for you? Like, what what are you what are you going to go into next for being that we are never going to get we're never going to get the wizard game, the mage. I mean, staff. Maybe, yeah, that that I mean, wizard game sounds really really good. You should revisit that. That sounds amazing. I, I think I will. I if I hopefully I uploaded it to the cloud and I didn't delete it in a fury because of the, uh, needing the room for chaotic good. But uh, I think it's still there. So I'll, I'll get back to it. It's just like developing in VR is a headache because you're in a VR helmet the whole time. So, <laughs> uh, you know, for the, the hundreds yeah. of hours I spend on these things, like to do it in a VR headset, is especially, and that just can't happen. It can happen now. But like when I, my baby was very young and I had to at all times be looking at the monitor and, and, you know, to have yeah. a headset on, block out everything I couldn't do. So maybe I'll come back to it. It it is cool and it and it functioned pretty well. Um, but it's just such a I mean, Dreams already is such a small player base that like to make a game out of that a fraction of that, mm, you know, yeah, it's just kind of a. So was it going to be like a like a wave wave game like we just have waves of enemies come in and you just you know use your magic yeah. and then another wave comes yeah. in? Yeah. Or... That would be the smart thing to do, but I, knowing me, I would do something really complicated and story driven. <laughs> oh, <it's so> cool. <laughs> uh, of course. But yeah, of maybe course. maybe just to get it out, maybe I would do like kind of a, mm. a like a wave thing like that. Mm. Huh. Well, I feel like we're going to uh, we're going to venture back into a few of these things, but but before we go to topics, uh, you wanted to share. Uh, you wanted to share something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I um I own a I co-own a video game record label for video game soundtracks, um, and we wanted to offer all the listeners fifteen percent off, uh, forever on everything on my website. Um, so I think Mighty's gonna put the link in the chat. Yeah. Um, and if you go to the bottom of that page and just sign up for the newsletter, it'll send you a code uh, for fifteen percent off anything on the site, and uh, that's good forever. Um, so, you know, anything we release, you can get there. 
And then uh, I just want to mention that we, the, 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 there are a lot of audio files out there. We get a lot of um, requests for like lossless flack. Um, the, the, the files on there are MP3, but if you write to customer service, we will provide you with the FLAC files for anything you order there. So if you are Fantastic. an audiophile who appreciates the extra, um, you know, the kind of the extra audio quality, um, we, we will provide that. You just got to write to us. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so, so what kind of, um, just, just so they have an idea, what kind of soundtracks do you have on, on your website available? Um, our latest releases were, um, Halo Infinite. Um, and the Halo Infinite multiplayer, uh, Psychonauts 2 and Psychonauts 2 Volume 2, which has the Jack Black song on it, so that's a good, that's a good one. Nice. Um, and, uh, and Chernobylite was, was one wow. of the later ones we Well, there released. you go, guys. If you like your video game soundtracks, you know where to go to get them. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So let's flip this over to the topics for today, which are going to run pretty mm. well there, there's a lot of them but there's a we'll, lot yeah there's a lot to yeah. go through <laughs> let's let's start with the fact that the MP awards is this sunday 27th mm. of march at you know uh 4 15 p.m bst which i i think is 1 15 our time because we've had this guys the reason we were late today was because time daylight savings time jumped forward for us last week and it didn't it, for it not it, not it yet. didn't for jammy <laughs> So he was sitting at home thinking life was great. <laughs> I, was, I was just, uh, you know, on, on the Discord, just checking through messages and stuff. And I get a message from Will, like, you're killing me, Smalls. And I'm like, dude, it's 7 p.m. Like, we don't we don't start pre-show for another half an hour. And he's like, oh, yeah, the clocks went forward, like, last week. So get yeah. get in here now. <laughs> yeah, he's acting like he didn't know, you know. I trying did not know. To, trying, to, trying to cut you and run on us again. To inform me, sir. First of, first of all, I never fail. Check the paperwork, and that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we were a little, uh, we were five minutes late today because we were with a frantic start to the show, yes, Ooh. frantic as all get out. But again, the MP Awards this Sunday, um, at 4 15 p.m. BST, or I guess that would be 1 15 EST, and you can figure out the rest from there. Um, actually, no, it would be 12 15 BST because y'all haven't. Yeah, because y'all haven't, haven't jumped. Yeah, so twelve fifteen for us. So the twelve fifteen EST. Anyway, uh, we need we need to all just get rid of this daylight savings thing. And well, just... we uh, our country is actually considering removing it. So is ours. Yeah, they're considering getting rid of it and just having it set to BST all the time, so that we have more daylight. So apparently, the uh, the the company that runs all of the data for all of like the cars roads and stuff they're saying that there's a lot less accidents during the summer because there's more daylight so they want us to get rid of it and just have bst all the time but i don't think they'll do it i don't know why we do it anyway i think it's confusing it just makes everything awkward for everybody for a little bit yeah and we had a question from chat from payoff wizard asking do you do vinyl soundtracks Ooh, that's a good question um we have the capability to do it um we haven't done any since we started i used to work for a record label um, called something else music works was owned by uh, Niall Rogers. I don't know if anyone's familiar with him, but um, and we did vinyl with them, and then we kind of, as they sunsetted their operation, we kind of took over, and we so we haven't done any since then. So we've done them, but not under under skill tree, um, and it just takes kind of the right the right property and the right uh, you know um, if enough people ask for it and it makes business sense, then we'll do it. So reach out to customer service. Make sure you put it in. Yeah, you're <laughs> requesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because this will be a place where uh, you got 15% off forever. So hopefully, you know, they'll do it. <laughs> they'll do it. Um, but yeah, yeah, once again, back to the MPs. It's a big year for the MP Awards, in my opinion, just because we've had, you know, that two and a half years to really just, well, almost two and a half years to basically see people's journey through dreams and like see the escalation of quality and talent within the dream So like, man, picking the list for this year's nominees must've been a headache. It must've been really hard. And I think that's why they bring in these independent people to help with the judging process, just not to only make it fair for everybody, but also to help because like, I mean, the talent pool in dreams now compared to like the first in piece has grown exponentially. 
and having to fine tune that with a fine comb like down to a really short list of people must be super difficult to do. And I'm glad I don't have the job because I'd want to give everybody an MP because all the stuff is amazing. Yeah, I mean, well, let's 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 uh, be a little a little conniving no. right now. Oh no, what That's, are you gonna do? No, uh, mm. no, <laughs> no, no. Here we no. go. Do you? Th- <laughs> let me ask you, and I ask Chad as well. Do you think the Made in Dreams podcast has a chance? Is there a no. chance? <laughs> no. There's absolutely no have chance. You, have zero. you seen the people that we are going against in that category? First like, of all, we're not going chance. against anyone, okay? Yeah, but that's, you, know, that's, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, but, but, you this know is what the dream reverse. Like, we're all holding yeah, hands, okay? I no. uh, yeah, but like seriously, like the people that are in the same category as us are absolutely phenomenal, and that they all deserve the award much more than we do. It's so. true. It's true. <laughs> it is. But I'm I've just seen... honored to be nominated in the first place. Like, exactly. The fact that we were included in that list is amazing. Yeah. Like, I mean, as soon as I saw that we like, I can't remember who pointed it out to me that we were nominated. It was it, me. Like, as soon as I saw it, it I was you? in the, I, yeah, I was in the messages like, bro, we got nominated. You was uh, like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like it, and so I looked at the list and I think the list was like the next person on that list was like, Elka and I was like oh all right well (laughs) thanks for the nomination guys I mean believe me I'm more than thankful to be nominated because they're just titans that run Mm. the dreamiverse they they just Mm. are and so it's like like you said to be in that list it was pretty it was pretty great it's it's a smile on face oh guys Speaking as an outsider, I think you guys have a chance. I mean, like, I like I don't know exactly who's on the nominees, but like in terms of content that I I don't like to watch the you know the streaming of actually building something you know like that's just not. But like if I could pop on a podcast, listen to it while I do the dishes or something like that's I like that you know I like Ugly Sofa. I like their like kind of top ten lists and stuff like that. They are but, also like, nominated in our category as but, well. Yeah, right, exactly. Mm. So like you know. Uh, the, it depends on the content that people, you know, that people like to watch. So I, I think you guys have a good, you, know, you cornered the market on podcasts. I mean, this is, I watch it, you know, <laughs> I enjoy it. Okay. Well, I, well, you, I, I really you. appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and uh, clip that and just, yeah, <laughs> just, just put it on my phone so I can look at it anytime I want. Be like, yeah, whenever you're feeling low, job. like whenever you're feeling low in life, just watch that clip. Just be like, yeah, you know what? Things ain't so bad after all. <laughs> and Dax is just coming in throwing hot fire. <laughs> just, just coming in spitting flames. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's all I can really say about it. But yes, thank you, Tabatad. I mean, I we try, and I know we're we're not the biggest, you know. No. I don't think we're even the biggest podcast, honestly. But it's you know, no, it, it really is an honor. We do what we do because we love doing it. We just love talking to people like yourself, individual creators, getting more insight into like your vision and how you work and speaking with the community and stuff. It's just, it's an honor to do it, honestly. I all just se- love talking to everybody. All of it secretly to try to absorb your talent through osmosis yes. no- of the mouth. Yes. <laughs> yes. We, just take, we just take, no- we have secret note takers that just sit like out off camera taking all the notes of how you do stuff. So one day we'll dominate dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, there's going to be no dominate. Just getting a little better. Just getting a little better. That's all. But I mean, yeah. So I, I can't wait for the show. Um, I have a busy weekend. I'm probably going to miss half of it, but somebody let me know. Somebody let me know if the, (laughs) if the part, if the clouds parted so that I can just throw everything off to the side and be like, I got to say I'm thanks. Gonna, <laughs> I'm just going to let you know now, if by some absolute miracle we do win, I'm going to be DIYing this wall behind me and putting up a shelf so it can sit there on every single episode and sit in glory. Yeah. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to get out all the DIY tools yet because it's, it, it's very slim chances, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But let's go on to, a, to other than the Made in Dreams podcast mm. and, and, and the MP Awards this Sunday again at 4.15 p.m. BST. Just trying to I'm trying to do my part so that people show up to this thing. They, they'd like, you oh, know, they're gonna they, show. They, they're gonna well, in show. case you didn't know, there's some people do, some people don't know. They're not as involved as we are. But I mean, yeah, let, but let's go on to something that that uh, I didn't when I first read it. 
I wasn't going to, ha ha ha, no pun intended. When I first read it, I thought it didn't hit me as hard, but as the week has gone on, the fact that Martin Nebelong's Bob Ross video was removed no. from from art, from subreddit art on Reddit, actually, actually has angered me. Yeah, the audacity. To a point, like, I, I mean, I'm not trying to be mad for Martin. He's going to be okay. Like, Martin don't need he's Reddit. Like, look, like, he's <laughs> he's going to be fine. He don't, he don't even need anybody to tell him he's good at what he does anymore. He, know, he yeah. knows. He knows. Yeah. He knows he's God, right? Okay? Yeah. He, knows he's, he knows he's God. But still, for some person behind a computer to look at that work and go, eh, ban. Like, I mean, there is... It's just unjustified. I mean... Reddit moderators, you gotta, it's like, it's kind of like the mentality, to, you become a Reddit moderator, same mentality, you become a cop or a politician, it's like, you either want to do some good for your community, or you want to throw some power around, you know what I mean, so, I wouldn't, I wouldn't read too much into one guy's opinion, but it I is, it is shameful, I mean, it's terrible. I just, I think Reddit is such a mean place. Like, it's it's really mean out there, like, compared to Twitter, like, where it's all, oh, all your stuff is great and well done, good job, like, you know, share it with me and I'll collab with you on something. And then you get to Reddit where it's, like, it's hell down there. Like, people don't care at all about hurting it's, your feelings and stuff. <laughs> it's, it's actually just a brighter, and I don't mean brighter by, like, happier, but it's actually, like, the layout is just brighter than 4chan. But it basically is 4chan. <laughs> Like it's just people are foul, and it's like I I don't know if any of y'all saw, but I actually got <laughs> when we did the when we did the round table a few episodes ago. I put it up just because someone from our from our our listeners was like, "Hey, you need to remember to put this up in in on Reddit and on Facebook because if I didn't see that random thing you put up on Facebook, I would have never known this existed." So, I've been trying to make a, you know, concerted effort to try to reach everywhere. Well, I'll put that up on on Reddit and somebody was like, "Yeah, have any of these people actually made anything?" And I was like, <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> and now I'm not offended for me because I'm like, yeah, I made some stuff, but no, nah, I mean I'm not gonna go around gloating about anything I've done. I, I, but Acert was on the round table. I'm like, who doesn't know Acert? <laughs> like, it's, it's so weird. I tell so, you what it is. I tell you exactly what it is. We have a very rare, special space on Twitter where it's not like the rest of the internet and social media. Because we've isolated our Twitter channels to dreams people only, and we only see dream stuff on our social channels, it's like this secluded, special space on the internet. And then when you go to Reddit, it's like you're going back to regular internet and you realize, oh yeah, this is a toxic place. I remember what the real internet is like now. Yeah. <laughs> So, like, it's just, like you said, it's another reason why it's proof that Twitter is to, mm. by far the best place for yes. dreams postings. It just is. Because mm. even people who have their wish it was on PC banter on, on Twitter, they'll still be like, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, and then they'll dig in. No. <laughs> <laughs> then, they're, then they're like, I wish it was on PC. It's not respectable. Like, can, <laughs> we, can, can we just take that as a as a minute like the whole the whole group of people that are still wishing for it on pc that just goes to show that the demand for it is still there and the interest in it is still there and they're still looking at dream stuff in order for them to comment on all of that stuff about pc like there is a huge requirement for it and the dedication of these people that physically can't play this game but yet still talk about it is incredible yeah yeah that's, i think that's the real, the it's real is devotion. Like yeah, the PC interest speaks the most to like that this is something really special because that's I mean, they're yeah like the the fact that that interest is there and they have all of all of the tools of gaming game exactly they, at their but yeah they they're just still like, want this. they still cry yeah. for dreams it's incredible and it just goes to show how well dreams is and people can realize the potential that it can have on PC. So yeah, it's really I find it really cool that those people still talk about it and like they're constantly in all of the comments. Bring it to PC, bring it to PC. It's just really cool to see that that still exists. Like you know, two and a half well, years later. To, to be fair, it's the internet. Nothing ever dies. I mean, you still got those people that show <laughs> yeah. up on Twitter, Reddit, in the IGN comments, all over. Dreams is dead. It's like no one was even talking yeah. about dreams, bro. What the <laughs> hell are you talking about? <laughs> 
<laughs> what is this? It's like a meme now to me because I can go anywhere and there's like a Dreams is Dead thing, like a comment somewhere in a video that has nothing to do about Dreams. It, it's weird, to be fair. So, I mean, I just wanted to ask this thing on the Martin Nebelong thing. You know, like, is this a case of Dreams not being accepted into the general art zeitgeist or... Is that just reading too far into the situation? And as uh, Captain Dax put, the Reddit mod just reeked of mouth breather energy. <laughs> I just so think Reddit's funny. just a mean place in general. It just has mean people on it. They're used to all of the toxicity. So it's just natural for them to, to instantly defend themselves before someone criticizes their comment. Let me actually switch back to this real quick because I, I actually made it so that we'd be able to... Uh, Talk about it, talk about it while looking at the actual post. So this was basically the whole Martin Nebelong thing and what happened. And it's just like, not only did it like, <laughs> he got muted. He got muted. In That's, the, in the, the, That's the egregious part. That's the egregious part. It's, it's just like, why? You know. <laughs> like, why did you mute him? Like, he didn't do anything wrong. I just don't get it. Yeah. How how dare he show art in the art channel? I know, right? <laughs> like anybody who looks at that, that pays attention to how he described it. Let's let's really break this down one one good time before we leave this topic. Basically, right. so cool. this dude is built. Basically, did a sculpted landscape, <laughs> which looked like a painting, and then went into the sculpted landscape. And painted the view in VR and painted the view of what he sculpted on an actual digital canvas. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Like that blows I, I my mind. It's like the coolest meta thing. Like it's like, why would you not? It's like, I don't know. It's just interesting. Like, why would you? I don't know. I don't know, maybe the guy, like, maybe the guy that watched it was super jealous of his work, and he's like, oh, I don't like you, I'm gonna mute you. That, that'll, that'll teach you to post greatness on this, on this subreddit. I would hope that somebody else, like, some other person in the subreddit that's a mod would be like, yo, bro, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> like I would... muted him, so he couldn't, he couldn't appeal. Yeah, like, I, I don't know, like, it's, it's just so, yeah. <sighs> You will it's not be sad. able to message it's, the moderators. You can't message the moderators for 28 days. <laughs> it's literally, you just got muted just so you couldn't talk back. <laughs> exactly. That's why it's so petty. It's just like, it it's is just super petty. Get a counter that's, exact, yeah. that's exactly what it is. It's, it's super petty. It's so petty. Coin them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, we talked about your actually gave people the link to your post last week because uh, you're working on some crazy stuff. That that last image importer, bruh, bruh, that joint's yeah. dope. Yeah, I, we need to talk about that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it, it's as Coinum put it in chat. He said, "How could they mute Martin? He's literally one of the greatest digital artists I know." And yeah, it's it's just it's just it's so baffling. It's that's baffling. the that's the part that makes it seem le like I know people certain people even under the post were like oh they're just jealous oh that's just Reddit mods being all powerful you know you know dropping their balls on a conversation I I I I, I mean yes but I just can't for the life of me see how someone looks at what he put up because he put it up other places if you want to see it but like everywhere so like. I just don't see how someone could look at it and like your camera's really shaky. That's all you got. That's all <laughs> you got it's, from it. It's super nauseating. Like work on your camera work, bro. It's just like, yeah. really? That, that's what you're taking away from this post is, is the camera work? Like, really? That's what yeah. you're going to talk about. <laughs> Which is actually following you know his eyes you know while he's painting. Go away? You what? make this problem go away is multiplayer. You could have another person in there. From their perspective, watching, <laughs> filming watching it, him yeah. filming, no shaky camera, yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's really interesting to me that that was the that that was like the thing. The go-to go response was to mute him, like that. Was, yeah, that was it. like, it's crazy. It's like I I saw this thing uh, also on Reddit, and it was very much like Martin Nebelong's, uh piece where he was constantly zooming out 
of the image and it just kept going. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It was just like mm. small. Someone had did something like that and the first comment underneath it was Xbox is bad though. And I was like, this thing, like this thing was literally like someone scrolling out and it took like three minutes of constantly pinching and zooming to get out of this full image. And I'm like, that's hold on. Was this, was this like a dreams thing or was it just a normal, it was just, it was just a normal art thing. And right, and, right, right, okay. yeah, and the person was just like the the whole conversation underneath this post was literally about Xbox, not and, about and the actual just, art just, that the person just did. Just to clarify, the art had nothing to do with Xbox. Oh no, the the art had something to do with Xbox, but it had to do with like every game console. It's like right, he zoomed okay, out. It was like yeah, zooming yeah, yeah. out of an X to like show different characters, different settings, and all this stuff that they had created like as a fan of xbox and it's just it, it i mean so it feels like when i saw that and then i thought back to this i was just like th- maybe it's just reddit culture like maybe that's just it i i don't go on reddit no. for the reason of i've tried reddit and when i did it was just so toxic i was like yeah i don't want that in my life i, I, so- I have to defend it a little bit because that's where i was at for a very long time until until like i was going to release chaotic good i was like i gotta get on twitter it seems like that's where everyone is and then I got on Twitter, and within a minute, I was booked on this show, and I was like helping <laughs> someone with another project or something. So it's like Twitter is where it's at, but Reddit, at least before, I think there's like a is limited engagement these days. But it used to be a good spot to be. Um, it's not, too, I don't want to say it's super toxic, but like yeah, you're gonna with the anonymity and all that, like you're gonna get some uh, um, some troublemakers. Oh yeah, of course, of course. So the next thing was. Um... On our topics, because I think it's just, yeah, I mean, we pretty much nailed this down as far as Reddit goes. If I didn't have to do it so that I could provide for the people, as people have suggested that I do, I wouldn't I wouldn't be on Reddit anymore. I honestly wouldn't. Um, I just can't seem to get the the I don't know. I can't seem to have the conversations I want on Reddit, (laughs) whereas like Twitter, I could just have them at any moment. And actually not have people, you know, being asses, to put it light. But the next thing, which I'll let Jamie take over, was the PSVR 2 at GDC. Yeah, so that was really interesting. So Pushquad did an article saying that the PSVR 2 headset was playable at uh, the Game Developers Conference that is currently going on. And I find that super, super interesting. And the reason I find it interesting is, is if it is physically playable in its current state right now, then it's very likely that we're going to get a holiday release this year for it. And to piggyback onto that, like a few weeks ago now, like two or three weeks ago, there was this whole thing about Sony sending out these like unmarked packages to all their studios and to all their third party partners and everything. So that kind of links up with this with maybe, well, maybe they were sending out the PSVR dev kits. To all of these people ready for the holiday release to start making some stuff for it which then leads me to believe that media molecule has one of these dev kits and if they intend to do a psvr 2 patch for dreams which they more than likely will they did it with the first psvr they're obviously going to be interested in the next then that means a ps5 patch has to come out in order for psvr 2 to work with it so maybe just maybe we might be getting a big dreams ps5 update this holiday along with psvr 2 with it as well i mean it's possible all of these things are lining up slowly but surely so well, what do you think well i i feel like this is going to bleed into our next topic so i i don't necessarily want to go into the conspiracy just yet we are going to go into it though okay, well uh, yeah we better <laughs> yeah but i want i had another question because you have like this quote from the uh what's his name chet felizek a Valve veteran, and he said, had one of those VR moments today playing in the new PSVR 2. Uh, you know where you where the world just feels different when you return? So good. So, I, I everybody loves Valve, so I take that as high praise. You know, at least yeah, they're, they're on the right track. They, yeah, like, they have the index. So, for them to say they have that fresh moment of coming back into VR is, is really something, because the index is an incredible piece of hardware. Now, My brother and I were talking about this earlier in the week, but so I want to propose the question, um, even 
if people don't view VR in this in this way. But my brother's been like, yo, they've been trying to get VR right since we were children. And it just has never truly graduated past being a gimmick. Mm -hmm. Completely and, agree. And yeah, and with that in mind, what is it that PSVR 2 needs to do to succeed and not be considered a gimmick? I'm glad you asked the question because I've been discussing this with multiple people this week. Um, for me, PSVR 2 is the make or break for, for VR in total because I personally think the only way VR is going to really break away from this gimmicky technology that it currently is is if we start to get real games for it like not just short experiences and wave shooters and stationary stuff like that's just made to be played for 20 minutes and pass along like we need some some hard content and you know the only games that we really have up to this point on vr that is fully fledged games is half-life alex and another one i can't remember the name of it though but it's like greek mythology dreams and dreams obviously of course dreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of come course on guys come on but yeah there's half-life alex and there's another one but i can't remember the name of it it's like a, a greek mythology kind of game but it's a fully fledged triple a 40 hour title like it's a full game and i think that sony has this perfect spot where they can start to introduce all of their ips into psvr2 and i think that you know they talked about it before about doing like a hybrid approach where these AAA games can be played on the TV flat as normal, or you can just plug in the VR and start playing them in VR mode. And I think that is the ultimate way to break through the market, is by giving players the choice of playing both VR and non-VR. Because you can't play VR for any longer than three or four hours. I mean, at least I can't. I get super tired, it, it aches my eyes, and it's more more energetic and involving so you get exhausted a lot quicker so the ability to like play it for a few hours in vr and then just switch to tv mode ideal for me love the idea of that and the fact that you've got these triple a games and you can get yourself immersed in like this beautiful world that that's not just meant to be last for a couple of hours like that's for me is the way that vr needs to go forward and until it does i don't think it will ever change no matter what hardware they bring out. It's the software that needs to change for VR to work. Um, I, I, I was saying earlier, I've got the PSVR, you know, a couple of years ago. I think it's a, incredible. I think that, I think there are games out there that are, you know, experiences. Uh, I mean, some of them are, you know, like Skyrim is old, you know, but like Man Sky in VR is a game changer. I mean, that is incredible fun. Um, you know, and, you know, some not a, not it's not for everybody because it's just kind of a kind of a walking you know collecting mm. game mm. like it's incredible i mean um and i just think i think that it's i think what you said about it, it, it being able to put it on and off just like the, the reason dreams is so interesting is because they have that yeah I mean, you, you have just, that hybrid functionality with it yeah it's crazy i mean i don't know how they they did that but so I don't even know, like, it's just sitting here. It can be on and sitting here and it's not in VR mode. And yeah. then I put it on my head and it's in VR. Yeah. I don't understand. So, so like that, yes, I think that would go a long way. I also just think like wireless, I, I think there is hardware things that could change a lot. Like if it were lighter and wireless, had a, like a larger field of view, you know, maybe 4K, 4K displays. I don't know if that's possible, but that, like. That's all on PSVR too. See that I think, yeah, like I think that's what everyone's talking about. I think <laughs> if you put on a headset and you're used to the the kind of the the kind of the, the blinders, the goggles, it, yeah, mm. yeah, the the limitation of like because it's not it's not a widescreen television when you put that on. It's much smaller. No, no. Um, I believe it's, I you, believe it's 110 degrees in the new one, as opposed to it's the big, so it's bigger. Yeah, I, I believe the current PSVR is like 90 degrees. And the new one is like 110. So it's a huge I think that'll go a long way. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think that'll be a huge game changer. Um, and so like, like yeah, that, I think that... there are some... Sorry, Sorry yeah, just just to clarify, like that, that field of view that we're getting 110 degrees is is on par with like the top shelf VR headsets on the market right now. Like I believe the only other two headsets that have a larger field of view is the Valve Index, which is like a thousand pounds just for the headset alone. Then you need a PC rig to actually power it, and the Pikman one. But that's like that's crazy. It's like super weird VR. But yeah. So as far as specs are concerned, like we are on top shelf quality with PSVR two with field of view. Yeah. So it's really that's impressive. Great. Yeah, I just think it's it's people needing to play it. Like I was not a believer until I played it, and then I was like, this is it. I mean, this is not this is what I always thought VR mm -hmm. should be. So I'm excited. I think it'll be 
he'd be great. Well, and just to I... clarify again, like I, I don't I, like the short experiences definitely have a place in VR, and they are definitely worth playing. But we need to have these longer experiences in order to for it to last. Otherwise, it's just going to always be this like gimmick thing when people come over and you're like, oh, try this game. It's 30 minutes long and it's all like real and so it's cool. Mm -hmm. Like it to break from that, you need to have the longer experiences. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, these are all things that I have a lot of high hopes for PSVR 2 because I, I didn't I didn't get a chance to partake in the first one because the moves just as I always talk about, they just never worked for me. I don't know if it, if I had a broken camera or what, but I just could never get those things to read the way they were supposed to. Um, so I love the fact that these aren't attached to a camera. Uh, that, that for one, is just huge for me. Um, but yeah, I, I think dreams, I, I really do think dreams should be at the forefront of the marketing for PSVR 2. I think that I think that is that is a step in the right direction to bring in non gamers. Like you can bring in gamers with it too, but you can also, you know, cross into the fact that I, I mean I know VR is a big thing for some people and some people have whole YouTube channels dedicated to it, but I did not know that until about a month and a half ago. And I've started looking at all these dudes who test every headset every day that it comes out, even the ones that aren't even out to, you know, the public yet. And it's just like, there is a, not only just a gaming market, but there still is that place for interactive media creation that it just, it doesn't really get focused. And I think that would be something that would make it so that, you know, as I always talk about an IGN, if, if like, if you, <laughs> you know, if you put it out there with that marketing and it, it, that's another angle, let me just cut short. Yeah. That's another angle yeah. that could be used to really make it so that people understand, like, you don't have to be a gamer per se to use dreams. I mean, we have more than enough people who literally just do sculptures in, in the dream mm -hmm. and do yeah, some, I mean, PlayStation yeah. should just do like kind of a, like a jam, you know, or, or, or MM should just do kind of like a, some sort of like jam where they get a bunch of artists together and kind of give them the lay of the land of the tools and just make like an art exhibit and just film the whole thing and put it everywhere and just, and then get, just interview those artists on like the capability. Cause like, you know, I, I, in the art scene in New York, a VR experience would, would kill. I mean, if it were, if it were interesting and well done, like, you know, just at, at, at a gallery, just again, it is, you have to have the ease of use. Like you can't have the old PSVR, you know, it has to be wireless and easy to, mm. you know, do, but like, you know, I, I think that, I think that artists that are looking to try something new like that could, it, I think it could speak to them. If I mean, all are presented the right way, you know, all you'd have to do is look at the stair, the, uh, the downward spiral stair, uh, stairway from the MP hub this year. Like they, they filled it with tons of sculptures and stuff that were, Awesome. Oh yeah. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean there is a there is a virtual art museum in Dreams, the Elysium. Like it was actually yeah. showcased in the Impies Hub, but there's the yeah. whole thing is in Dreams, like the more extended version, the full thing. Like someone yeah. has made a full virtual art museum in Dreams. That's just like crazy. Like it's it's fits art so much, like to do that and especially to see it in VR and get up close and look at all the detail. Yeah, brilliant idea. Yeah. So that's okay. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad that uh, the VR gimmick thing didn't come off the wrong way. And <laughs> you guys had something to say on that. Um, but let's go ahead and get to the next step, which is this. And this is where I say the conspiracy starts. This is where we go into the conspiracy of what you were getting into, Jamie. Because if for those that might not be able to see, that's a PS5 tag. On Dreams. In, on the PS Store. On the PS Store. Mm. Now, if we scroll down just a little bit, we see Media Molecule was quick. Quick yeah, to like, come oh, up in here. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> this is an error we're investigating today as to what caused this. Okay. So, so, mm, All right. I, mm, so this is what I have to ask as far as that goes. Like, do we... Do we believe them? Oh, come on. Sony made or, a boo-boo. Or, 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 Sony made a boo-boo. No, 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 hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. 
because there's a there's a there's a there's a common way that this could be a mistake, but also another way you could argue where it's like, but but how? Okay, let me let me let me let me let me play this out. Uh, this right, okay, conspiracy okay. files. Yeah, I wish right. I had mm, queued up mm. the X Files music, but then again, they probably mute the video. Oh, if bro, I did. we should have we yeah. should have totally made tinfoil hats for this section yes. of the show. Yeah, I I still have one around here somewhere. You have one? <laughs> yeah, I took I took my my um like my my Japanese joint and I actually put tin foil around it, so it's just a oh, big bro, you totally tin foil. Had, you should have it's had so it's you should have so. I should have. But anyway, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. So it could be that they're right. It was just a simple mistake. We're looking at it. We're looking into it. But we also know because of the multiplayer, (laughs) the multiplayer fiasco, as I like to call it, where when something shows before they want it to show, or before they really have anything to say about it, they do try to hold back the floodgates of expectation. And if this were true, even if it wasn't true now, but if it's working on being true in the future, which is what we all hope, that it, that it is true, this could literally be they're prepared for it. Somebody flipped the switch, you know, and Here's and it's question. but it's still there Here's because the way because the way I see it is if it was a mistake uh, hear me out this is all for fun by the way guys if the, if if this were a mistake what the hell were you doing on the dreams listing in the first place to make that mistake exactly like why would they be on the dreams listing where you have to push a button to add that PS5 logo to that storefront. There is no mistake made. There was, it's not a mistake. It was a mistake that they launched it that early, yes. But is it a mistake that the logo just happened to be there and it shouldn't? No. No. You don't you don't deliberately go onto the dreams page and deliberately add that logo to then go, oh no, I added it to the wrong game. Whoopsie, let's delete that off. No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how the PlayStation Store works, but I imagine it's something like when I distribute music. You know, I imagine it's like metadata that's in a spreadsheet that you upload, and I don't know. I'm speaking from no, no understanding of how these online stores work, but you, you're right in that once it's up there, it wouldn't change. Like, I don't know why it would change if unless they were doing some migration from one thing to another, and then in that, you know, something like that then it can easily change because it's just a matter of having the wrong box checked in your metadata or something. So I don't know, you know, I I could see it either way. I really could. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh no! I I was muted. I was muted. I was muted. We're recapping. Recapping yet again. Okay, so in chat we had Captain Dax said used to work with teams responsible for doing console deploys. I can't see how this happened by mistake. Coinum said not the first time PS Store has leaked future content. True. True. Payoff Wizard said there is obviously a PS5 version in the works, but releasing it anytime soon would be madness. The player base is so small, it would be crazy to split it in two. Thank you, Sinak, by the way, for letting me know that <laughs> for letting me know I was muted. Um, and and that leads me into my next question under this topic. Do we? In the sense of fracturing the community, I believe everyone, and this is one of the most interesting pieces of Elka's uh, yes. comments, which is what which is what we're going to get to here. I'll just go ahead and switch that over. Switching from Elka, but one of the most interesting things that I 
found in his post was at the bottom where, like, we've spoken ad nauseum about what could be in dreams. And Elka poses the question just for a fraction of a second. Is PS4 holding dreams back? Without knowledge of an MM insider, I think everyone's answer to this is yes. I, I, I mean, yeah, just... 100%. Just, from, yes. from a technical standpoint of what they could do with dreams, given that they just push the new hardware, absolutely. And, you know, as, as was pointed out by Payoff, like... You know, fragmenting the community is a huge fear that was out of control simply with the introduction of PSVR 1. So, like, some people still complain about this fracture. And I would say that not, I say complain not into say right or wrong. It's just you guys know where I stand. Fracture the hell out of it. That's, that's, that's where I stand. Anything that stands in the way of dreams growing technologically. Or a path for me to grow within it. I'll take the hit now. Personally. I'll take the hit now. Against having more creative options not available. That's how yeah. I see th That's how I mm -hmm. see it. So when people say. like, It's not like you can't use dreams. It'll just be another tag that says. This was created on PlayStation 4. Or PlayStation 5. And it may not work on your jams. But doesn't. I mean. Yeah. But if you can, if you want to, I, mean, I mean, let's let's be real for a second. Like people that are gaming on consoles, the whole point of of the process of evolution is to eventually move over to the new hardware. Because you know, af after this two or three year gap or whatever it is that Sony's doing for the migration phase of people moving from PS4 to PS5, eventually the games are going to like all the new games are going to stop being supported on the older hardware, especially the exclusives, because they want to push the new consoles. And the best way to do that is to make the next IP or whatever they make exclusive to PS5 so that people move to the new console. Like, that's just the general rule with consoles anyway, and it would be the same with Dreams if they released this PS5 update. People would just slowly start to migrate to the new hardware that supports the new programs and software. It's just the way that things work. Yeah, I also think there's already a, like a soft segmenting happening because people are on PS5 designing games, not exceeding thermal limits, but definitely making an unplayable PS4 game. Like, I, yeah, I, have, I have a, a frame PS4... Rate. Mm. Yeah, and it's just too slow. I mean, I, I've that are, I've been playing something, and I'm like, this is amazing. And then they go that ex the next scene I open up, and it's just like I can't even I can't play this. Yeah, just super choppy. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've specifically not gotten a PS5 because I wanted to make sure that Chaotic Good was totally frame rate ready for PS4. Um, so like, I think that if they made a PS5 version that could play all the PS4 dreams, you know, play dreams proper, you know. It, I think it would be fine because I think that you're already going to run into this problem and it's going to be even worse because people don't even know it. There isn't a tag to say this is a PS5 game. They're just Unless they actually like state this. it in their description right, right. That, yeah. that it was made for PS5, you, you would never know. But you never know, like you wouldn't know as a PS5 person in dream, when you're dream shaping, you wouldn't yeah. know that it's not going to Yeah, that's the PS4. thing. You wouldn't know because you're running on hardware that can just perform better. It just has a much more stable frame rate. But Elka actually made a really good point in his comments about how he would handle the the dreamscaping side of things with with the Fermo. Is that like you know once you reach PS4 limits on a PS5, you'd get a notification to say, okay, this is at the moment this is everything that a PS4 could handle. If you add any more Fermo to this, it's going to be PS5 only. Super simple way of like solving the the whole split thing because it's down to the player then to decide whether they want to make a game that will be playable on PS4 and PS5 or just PS5 only. And like that, people should have that control and power. As a creator, as an artist, it should be down to that individual to choose whether they want to utilize the full power of PS5 or whether they want to downscale to make sure that the majority of the player base can play it because we know that not everybody's on the new consoles yet. But that freedom of choice in developing your art should be available. At least I think so, anyway. I mean, yeah. And of know. all the magical things that MM is doing, I, I, I think that that's an easy one. Like that, that yeah. seems like an easy thing to yeah. do. Yeah. Super simple. As soon as you reach that limit, big splash screen, 
you're going to move now to PS5 mode if if you don't stop or start to to monitor what you're doing and and reduce your firmo so that PS4 players can still play it, or you can just go, you know what? No, it's going to be PS5 only, and that's fine. Like I don't see how the split. I can't I can't really see it in a negative way because I do believe with Mighty as well that you know the Dreams has the potential to grow. And if that means moving it to PS5, then so be it. You know, it's an evolving platform. Dreams will never be done. They're the type of people that will just keep progressing and progressing as much as they can. So, yeah, I believe PS5 all the way. But that doesn't mean that PS4 is going to stop. If that option is there for creators to still create content for PS4 players, they're going to do it. And eventually we're all going to be moving to PS5 anyway. It's the end goal. No one's going to stay on PS4 forever. So let's just embrace PS5 and what potential it has for dreams. Yep. Well, I mean, I, I mean back through chat because we're we're getting different different opinions. I love it. So Captain Dax said, "quote crazy to split it in two." Unquote. That assumes the player base would be split. I doubt that will ever happen if when PS5 gets a version. I don't know. It, it, it's the split may only be in conversation but that conversation if if we take the split that happened with PSVR1 and how many people and how many big name people within the community were not happy like they they some people borderline I just don't on that understand betrayal why, though. on that betrayal aspect like that betrayal stance on it and that and I take that as like negative press now press is press I but I, I mean, people really we felt just, ways. Yeah, yeah, can we just talk about that for a second? Like, why was people being upset about it when it was just another way to create something? Like, it was comp VR is supposed to be separate. Like, well, that's, one, that's, that's that's the point to make VR experiences. How is that splitting stuff? I don't understand. One of the arguments that I that I heard was that it split to the community to where the new hot thing wasn't just dreams. It was VR in particular. And therefore people were feeling like they were getting buried under the, the basically the, the uh, headlines of VR because they were, they felt not as relevant. That's one of the arguments. I'm not saying that's a great argument or anything. That's just one of the arguments that I heard. And when people tell me about this or when people say splitting, fracturing the community, that's the only thing within dreams so far that has really been any type of split. But it wasn't even a split, if you ask yeah, me. Yeah, let's, let's, like, let's just think about it for a second. Did it even split the community? In my opinion, it definitely a lot, did not. A lot of people feel like it did, and I can only say this from their point of view. This is not my argument, because I already told y'all, I split the hell out of it. People like, catch up when they catch but up. That's, that's, but that's the thing, though. It doesn't even split it. it it's just giving an extra more options. category. It's yeah. just giving an extra category like to create and play for. Like, how is that splitting it? If you don't own a PSVR, then okay. You can't play this selective content that was specifically designed for a specific piece of hardware. That's not splitting the community. That, That's just and you it even... having, having the hardware to support it. You can go buy one if you want it. By all means, please do and enjoy it. But that's not splitting the community. It's just adding extra stuff to things. It, it also doesn't even take up space on the dream surfing side if you don't have yeah. your PSVR and it's just... You don't happens. see it. You don't see yeah, it. Yeah. So, so I, I just, I, I don't know. I'm, I, just I, I'm, just very, I'm just very opinionated with it. I don't think it's splitting the community at all. It's just adding an extra thing. And I love that Media Molecule are embracing it. And like, there was like, yeah, let's add VR support. Like we can do tons of different things with VR. And yeah, the whole split in the community thing, I think it's just... I think it's just silly. It's just part of evolution. Well, Captain Dax said it's indisputably a technical bottleneck, but I think the more interesting question is, does this make a practical difference, a practical difference to for most creators? And he says he thinks the answer is no. Hmm. Yeah. I, I forget who I was reading today uh, on Twitter that was saying like, has I, have I ever really hit a limit? on something that I wanted, like, with like an idea, like an idea, or maybe it was on your show. Maybe I can't remember, but like, anyway, it was like, have I ever, have I ever really exceeded it? So, like not been able to do an idea because of the thermo limit, you know, there's always a clever way to optimize it mm, and do it. I believe it was way. on the show. I think it was on the round table. We discussed uh, this. A lot of people would would say yes. 
I mean, I now have what, a project in the works that I scrapped because the frame rate dropped so badly, but I'm sure there's a way I could pull it off if I went back in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think it's purely down to the individual and their experience and skill with dreams. Like, you may not be able to do it, whereas someone else could jump into your creation, spend an hour optimizing it, and boom, it works perfectly. It's, right. it's basically down to who you know and what you know. Yeah. yeah. That being said, having, like, pixel perfect sharp edges and stuff you know would be really nice you know, on, on the yeah. ps5 and, so. yeah so i mean and just just as a disclaimer here just as a disclaimer i was saying this before i had a ps5 and if if people have been with the show long enough i was for fracturing and going as far as dreams could go before I had a PS5, which I only got by luck from a friend I knew from college over a decade ago. So <laughs> just hit wow, me up Mal, out that, of the blue. That, that really is luck, isn't it? Yes. Like that's luck. And, and it's just like, but I, even if I didn't have a PS5, I would still have the same stance to do, Take it as far as it needs to go. That just leaves me more headroom for when I want to create and my creations getting bigger in the future and having less road bumps. I, I do agree here. Coinum said, uh, at the same time, I love trying to innovate with further compression to make things work on PS4. It helps me think outside the box with what I put in. Yeah, that's that's always yeah. uh, Less you know is more sometimes yeah. becoming 100%. technically or just becoming technically better at at fitting it, but at the same time, you know th I, I, there is a it's part definitely part of the growth of of a dreamer like when you hit that wall, and but it's, find a way around it. Yeah, yeah, but it's also something that does kind of stand in the way, and not everybody makes it. And, not, and not only just that, though, but just the other technical capabilities that Dreams could do. Like, even if Fermo wasn't a thing, let's just like imagine for a second that you know Fermo stays the same. But like, just other things that they could do, like reflections and and you know maybe like glass and stuff, and being able to do transparency, just other type of features that Dreams could have. Forget Fermo altogether. Like PS5 has that ability to do it because it's clearly a hardware issue where the engine just can't can't cope under that pressure on a ps4 but it wouldn't have that problem on ps5 which which brings me back to a conversation or to a statement i almost skipped over uh char put in oh my god if multiplayer is only exclusive on ps5 it will be Ooh, yeah I bet it, it, will be. It, it, it will be you think so i absolutely why? do because why everybody knows i've been complaining for god knows how long about co-op in games and like how I don't understand how come co-op isn't a part of more of these big, huge, sprawling worlds and all this stuff where you have to run around by your lonesome. Some people don't mind that. I prefer playing with a friend. Maybe it's because I'm the younger brother and I used to love playing with my older brother. Who knows? But the point is, I've been complaining about this for about a decade now, before this show ever existed. And someone put me in my place. <laughs> with knowledge <laughs> which is awesome i'm not throwing shade they put me in my place and said that I, i'm probably saying this wrong but i think dax might be able to correct me uh given this knowledge but someone told me the reason you don't see it more is because as games have gotten bigger and more basically more detailed it just larger to do co-op, you need to be able to basically pull off the same game twice within an instance of having co-op. Like, that's how you get co-op, is you basically have the information being fed so that you are literally running the same thing that the first, like, one player is seeing, doubling it and mirrored by the other player. And I... they're... I don't know this for sure, so I could be completely wrong, but I feel like that might only be for split screen. I feel like for you could give some load to the other console if you were online multiplayer. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. But since I heard that, I've been thinking to myself, like, there's a way for, even with what you said, there's a way that that could actually add in way more complications. Like, even if it's not split screen. So since then... 
I'm not sure. Even if case. it does, even if it doesn't apply, it's just what comes to my mind when I hear this because technically I do not know. Okay, I don't. I'm merely throwing stuff out. I hope to be corrected. Uh, but yeah, I mean, since, you don't even know. But, like multiplayer is very complicated because it's a game games within a game that all have different i don't know how it will work but it will all have different matchmaking lobbies and like it's all going to be dependent on the creator of the game i i don't know how they're going to make it work but, From yeah. a dreams perspective, but, if, but to me yeah. but to yeah, me so if I, I, you know to me if you're going to ball all of this up and put it in dreams this conversation and put it in dreams we're already above thermo Oh, we're above thermo in the conversation of of if, multiplayer, if and the so doubling, for, yeah, and the so, doubling, yeah, and so for me, that's why I think they won't say anything. Getting back into conspiracies, that, this is the reason I, I I believe they won't say anything because I truly believe that it can't happen until the console has more power. That could be that maybe it's the way they built it that made it that way. Maybe they could do it on PS4, but I don't know. I, I it is just just a just what comes to mind when the multiplayer thing jumps agree. up, which is which is why I don't which is why I don't really like the last couple of episodes I've been like, and let's talk about this outside of multiplayer. Because yeah, everybody wants it. We all know everybody wants it. So if everybody wants it, I mean we just gotta wait until we have more information. But that's how I see it. Now I'm gonna see if anybody actually corrected me in oh god, Dax has been typing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. hold on i don't know anything so if, if, yeah, yeah if, if we have a pro in chat then it's fine yeah. like you know we can get yeah. some clarification yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh we'll start with uh tom makes a good point with his comment about soft split let me see here hold on soft split okay so payoff wizard said what would a ps5 version add that wouldn't create a split I mean, I, I don't, I don't think there's anything it would add that wouldn't create a split. It personally, would just create a, it would just create a split period. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I and 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 I mean, that doesn't mean you can't use your dreams PS4. That's that's right, like, how it, I think it would only be a problem from the PS4 perspective. You just couldn't play everything. But like, yeah. I don't think it would take away anything else. Yeah, I mean, PS4, PS4 is going to go anywhere. Stuff. Oh, God, right. let's not get Jamie hyped up again. Oh, no. Because <laughs> he obviously like, feels raised. I don't know, but it's, it's not like all of a sudden, boom, P all the PS4 stuff is gone. It's PS5 only. Like, that's not ever going to happen. Like, that will always be there. And there will always be people creating PS4 stuff because there will be a small percentage of people that just don't make the move to PS5. And that's fine. But we've got to move on. It's the yeah, way a, that technology a works. From a creator's perspective, you're still going to have the same eyes on your project if that's yeah. what you're concerned about the split. It, because the PS5 will still be able, I'm sure, be able to play everything that's on the current. Of dreams. course, yeah. Now, so let's get into this. So, Captain Dax, this VR thing sounds like it's just a vocal minority. Maybe I just saw a lot of people, and maybe it, that is that a lot of people was just a minority. Who knows? Um, I just kind of feel like for every for every minority, vocal minority, there's a, there's like double that who, who feel the same way, but just don't type it. That's how I view like online stuff where it's like, just like there's people like me who are just, and I know they exist, who are just like, leave it behind. I bought a next gen console for next gen stuff. Like, I know there's people who share that sentiment. Uh, is it? A minority? I don't know. But I feel like if I see people having the conversation, I can at least double that. And that's the people who saw it may agree, but might just be like, yeah, and keep scrolling. Like that's <laughs> Not everybody feels the need to say things. Uh, but um, most people don't care. Total non-issue. The only This is Captain Dax. The, the only way this is a real issue is if we give a voice to the dumbest people in the room. <sighs> I mean... That holds weight. 
Yeah, 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 it holds weight. So he said, like, I think we're yelling at a boogeyman here. Most people don't see it this way. I would be, I would bet real dollars. (laughs) I'd buy that for a dollar. Uh, uh, Going from single player to multiplayer is a huge hurdle. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here's, Here's the juicy stuff. All of a sudden, network engineering becomes a concern, which is a huge can of worms. This technical problem and then a bunch of design concerns come into play. What happens when two players have separate campaign states? How does my quest system work? Does it track state on a player? Now I have two players with disparate state, etc., etc. Huge, huge hurdles with multiplayer game dev. And... Then we have, let's see, Sock Wielder. Yeah, that or the multiplayer dream simply has less thermo available, which no one wants. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's not an option. <laughs> no, that's not but, an option but at this point. that does make sense, Sock Wielder. <laughs> um, and Captain Dex said, yeah, sorry, typing a lot. Lots of questions I have answers to. Also, the delay of Twitch chat to voice convo always makes it awkward. Don't mind if you skip messages I type that are about a topic from 10 minutes ago that isn't relevant. Hey, I try to see them all. <laughs> I, try, I try, but respond, thank you for that breakdown. Yeah, to respond to like the question of you know what happens to uh, separate campaign states and everything. From my experience with online co-op games, is that the the majority of them work where the host is like the the main player and the the person joining that game is joining their world. So like you are playing in their campaign. You're playing their quests. It's like State of Decay 2. Like, I played through that with a friend. And he was always the host. So I was joining his world. So it, 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 there, there isn't two separate campaigns or See, the, the problem of different quests being completed. But there is the, the one thing that still is... I mean, there's a lot in that that's still a hurdle in my mind. But, yeah, of course. But, but then you also have to look at the fact that that was built from the ground up to have multiplayer. Whereas this is now a set, like a set system that has to have it implemented. And I'd imagine that would be a lot harder that if you, like, I guess I would need to speak with like Housemark to be like for Returnal and their new co-op they just put out, which is amazing if anyone hasn't played it. Um, like, I wonder if they always had the plan, which I have to think they did. Because the feature, one of the features in that game, which was like the most awesome thing no one talked about, was that you would find the bodies of other players playing Returnal who died at a spot. And if you beat their basically infested husk, then that person, like, would get a notification on their PlayStation saying like this person took care of that for you. And I had never seen anything like that in a game before. And when I was playing Returnal, I was like, not one review has talked about this feature. And it just creates an interconnected nature to that. That's even more interesting put on top of the storyline of Returnal. So like yeah, but anyway, back to back to. I just thought that was really cool, and like I said, no <laughs> no other review said anything. I watched so many reviews for that game, and no one said it. And then when it happened, I was like, why am I getting these messages? What are these notifications? What does it mean? Blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, it's 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 insane. I love it, but yeah, the I, having it built in versus adding it, just having the groundwork for it had to be good. And I don't know if Dreams ever decided that was a thing. I don't know if Meteor Molecule looked at that. So if they are starting from absolute scratch, yeah, it could be hard yeah. to put that in the engine. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm worried about what it's going to be. I'm really worried about what it's going to be in the end because I, like, what I, I want to do stuff like that. Like, in, If I were to make a multiplayer game, I would want to do cool innovative experiences like in Returnal when you do, you know, something like that, or like in Journey when you just run across another player yeah. or, you know, in Sea of Thieves when they're streaming in another, you know, person in your cell or something, you know, like, like there's certain, that's what interests me in multiplayer. And I just feel like when it does finally release, it's going to be like Mario Party, you know, like four players, mini games kind of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. it's just not going to be able to like, you're never going to have a, like, be able to play strangers in a matchmaking system or something like that. Like, 
which kind of bumps me out. But I, that's why I'm so curious to hear what what the features are. Yeah, I mean, just just from a technical aspect of just you know having all of this server side stuff like prepared for all of these games, like because they don't they could they can estimate how many games they think would end up being on their multiplayer servers, but they could never know for definite. You know, the Dreamiverse is ever evolving, so like, how do they account for all of the server space they need? Or the networking they need, like the infrastructure to handle the support for this. And like, what if Dreams all of a sudden gets a massive influx of players because of multiplayer and the infrastructure isn't there to, to hold all of them? Like, it's just a massive headache. Just just thinking about it from a technical standpoint is is crazy. And I, I don't know if anything like this has been done on this scale where you could just jump onto this thing and make a multiplayer game and suddenly have network infrastructure supported by it by the developer. It's it it's mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a, such an undertaking. And Captain Dax says, "Yeah, Jamie. Lots of games take that approach, making the host state be the only one that progresses. Sometimes that feels bad as the visiting player. Me and a bud went to play a game together, realized it worked that way, and just decided to play our own campaigns while chatting online. Weird, right?" Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I I 100% agree with you. Like when I was playing through State of Decay 2, I was always the person joining the host. So like I never had any progression in that game. It was all on him and like if anything that he looted was stored and I needed it, he had to get it out. I wasn't allowed to access his loot because it was local to his system and stuff. So yeah, it it's not the best way to do it. I suppose the way the reason why they do it that way is it's because it's the probably the easiest way to do it where everything is all resourced on one end and then one person is just joining it sharing those resources is obviously the issue but if we're going to do it in dreams it kind of needs to be shared which then reopens up that conversation of how the hell do you do that yeah well, you can wrap it into the narrative like elden ring is basically that prop that system except you know you're like summoned into someone's world so you feel it's it ties into the narrative of being like pulled into a parallel universe of the other tarnished yeah. or what you know so there's ways to get creative with it yeah i mean i'll i had some things i wanted to say but i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna keep it moving um <laughs> uh, uh why led says from games have something like that yeah they do that's why you can't go into another person's world in elden ring and find any smithing stones a-holes <laughs> Uh, why well, led better Mario Party, but you play Hanky Sonic clones. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> to right. be honest. That actually uh, does sound like fun. <laughs> yeah. That'd be it, great to stream. That'd be so fun. Twitch is gonna like be alive when multiplayer drops for dreams. <laughs> right. it, Captain Dex said totally regarding state of decay, and yeah, I imagine it is easiest. Always pros and cons. Think about how Elden Ring does that. Yeah, Tom is talking about it now janky <laughs> violets and janky oops and see my thing is it's like oh i missed that's what i did i missed it i remissed them uh, remissed i missed the message from sock wielder who said i remember hearing that dreams was set up for multiplayer from the ground up mm, i i never maybe, read it maybe so I, I never I mean, read it. It's, it's easy to believe that, though, isn't it? I mean, knowing the developers at Media Molecule and how they work and, and the vision that they had for Dreams 10 years ago, it's very plausible to believe that multiplayer was considered from the beginning of this project. This, I think it may have been considered, but I think after everything that's come through now, I'm still holding on to my first conspiracy. The very first one I said, Bubble Bath version 2. I think that all the things that people are asking for that would have to be in a PlayStation 5 version of Dreams, I think it would need not just it's not an up it's not an update in the sense of oh we can just patch that in. I think it's literally Bubble, Dreams 2. Yeah, it's literally mm. Dreams 2. I think Bubble Bath would have to actually be completely upgraded as an engine. And I don't know what that looks like. And it, it might have been in from the ground up, but also there's a lot of people from MM that were in the forefront back when this released that we haven't heard from in a really long time. I'm just going to yeah, point that of, out. A lot, of a lot of people are silent at MM. Yeah. A lot of people, very quiet. Yeah. Which, so, which, which you can only take as a positive when it comes to things like this. If they're quiet, it means they're busy doing something good. Yeah, and Sock Wilder says they built it many times over. Yeah, I think they're out to build it again. I think for all the... <laughs> I mean, for all the stuff people want, it's just, it, like, 
Like the simplest thing that we always bring up because I made it a thing <laughs> was the whole thing of how come sculpts don't have an opacity slider. That always threw me off. Now they address that if you can bake to paint, which is a supposed update that's coming, then you can have an opacity slider on the paint. So that would work out. But at the same time, you know, they said we can't do that in the way you're stating when I talk to them on the media molecule stream. It's because it's like, yeah, that's just something the bubble bath engine can't do. Like not right now. And so, you know, I just think a lot of this stuff while you can, you just can never know what, where technology is going to go. It literally changes almost every two years. Like, like how many iterations they had? Like he, uh, sock wheeler said they built it over and over. Well, what was it? A seven year creation process. Around, yeah. Around about. Yeah, about seven years. Well, in the past seven years, let's think of the actual progression from PlayStation, like PlayStation four, actually coming off of PlayStation three to PlayStation four. To now being at PlayStation Five, if you were building something that was trying to levy all the energy or all the technological advancement you just did in that semi three console period, you'd have to start from scratch. Like you'd have to build it multiple times because the landscape. I mean, real talk. Let's look at let's look at the Last Guardian. When it like the first images we saw of the Last Guardian from PlayStation Three. And then the Matrix experience on PlayStation Five, <laughs> like that's yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good comparison. <laughs> like they would have to build yeah, it. So there's, I they'd mean, have there's, to, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not saying they had to. They'd have to necessarily rebuild everything. You know, the, the, the coding is still coding. They, you know, might have to tweak it a little bit. See if they can. In you know, I y'all know me. I don't. I don't. I don't fucking know. Like it's just. <laughs> they, I know that they have to do more than I would do, and. That takes more knowledge in the in the, the whole thing. So that's why I've been trying to, like I said a few moments ago, try to lead away from the like every conversation divulging into multiplayer and how much we want it. Because I just don't know what it takes to make it happen. And I'm sure they feel the pressure. <laughs> not only not only just like the pressure of of building multiplayer, but like what they could do with it. Not just in the fact of being able to make games multiplayer, but the whole dream shaping side of, of multiplayer that they could do. You know, multiple people being in a scene, creating something at once and stuff like that. We know that Media Molecule are creative and they think outside of the box. And if multiplayer was on the cards, we, we know that dream shaping has been, has been a discussion. Like, how would we implement it into that? They're not yeah. the type of people to just go, oh, well, let's just make it so games can be multiplayer. They want to do it on everything. That 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 that, that, that type of people. So... It, that just opens up the conversation even further as to how you would go about it. It's just it's just a, a migraine and a big black hole that will never end. Oh, we got some things going in chat, baby. Let's see. <laughs> Captain oh, Dax. No. <laughs> Captain Dax said that's why you see games come I out. I know. That's that's why we see games come out. Sometimes that feel like they were inspired by tropes from three to five years ago. They were. And it just took that long to build. Coin them. They have hired plenty of multiplayer employees. It's going to come out just a matter of when. Captain Dax. We don't know what they've hired multiplayer or that they've hired multiplayer employees, do we? I've seen network engineering listings, but Dreams as it exists today requires that sort of expertise. Which now, is where, you start, which is where we start, where we get into the conspiracy, you start, baby. You're going to bring up Bungie, aren't you? You're going to bring up Bungie, aren't you? I'm going to bring up a few. I'm going to bring up a few yeah. things. <laughs> I know Bungie's going to be in there. <laughs> it is. Because this, we don't, because I don't think we know, no, but we know. I, I feel like even though the, the, neither, neither Jamie <laughs> or the guest we had on during that episode was buying into my game, I think we know. Because they said that they wanted the Bungie or they got Bungie because they wanted to focus on uh, multiplayer and live service games. And they plan to put out 10 
But most people hear that they plan to put out 10, but leave off that it's going to be 10, including things that exist from other PlayStation Studios. I read the quote to y'all on that episode when everybody was calling me a madman. <laughs> I found the article and read it to y'all. I wish I had had it set up like I did now where I could have put the article on the screen, but I put the link in chat. I'm telling you, uh, they are, as well as some of these other companies that they've made to do PC ports and to do VR games and all these other additional studios, I do believe that they brought in one of the reasons that they got Bungie is because that's literally what they do. And if they can spare two people to come over to work on Dreams, I think it's just what I did. I don't know if Dreams, I don't know, I don't know if Media Molecule needs that help, but we don't know what they're shooting for. We always say we don't know what Media Molecule is doing, but we trust them to be creative and out of outside the box for the most part. That takes a bit. That takes a bit. I don't know if they had it already, if they hired it already, but having a studio like Bungie, who literally lives in that space, that it makes sense to me. It just does, especially when the article says working with other PlayStation Studios. It it it, it makes sense. Call me a crazy man. I don't care. I'll stand up here and die on this hill on but all by my lonesome. I don't need nobody. But I, I it just feels right to me. No, no, no. For the most part, yeah, it, it's very plausible that they could just go, you know, okay, two or three employees go over and help Media Molecule. It is plausible. <laughs> it, it is plausible. Was it like in the main decision process of buying Bungie is, hey, let's we can use it for Dreams. Let's let's spend three point six billion on this because it can help Dreams. Absolutely not. So <laughs> Dax is being a. <laughs> doing what's he doing droid first time chat thank you for joining us said when does multiplayer come out and captain dax said tomorrow <laughs> and i just wanted to take this moment to say droid it doesn't come out tomorrow no. at, if it did, this year would be a whole different situation <laughs> yeah yeah we would probably be having a multiplayer round table that would be <laughs> like so what do y'all think we finally getting it just yeah that that was funny i'm sorry <laughs> tomorrow that's <laughs> nothing else just tomorrow but droid don't worry it's coming it's coming it's just when we don't know but we know it'll be good that that helps me sleep at night so yeah <laughs> but yeah so we said we were going to end off today with some outside the box conversations. Oh boy, here we go. We we got I'm going to limit it. I'm going to limit it to 15 minutes max. Oh boy. God. So at so 515 <laughs> 520 for those on the East Coast, that's when we're ending this, but we're going to start with the fact that Sony announced before we went live that they are going to put out Spartacus, the Game Pass competitor. Uh, when was that, Jamie? Uh, next week. Uh, but this is a, this is from Bloomberg. It's not officially announced by Sony. It's just like you know Bloomberg saying that they've heard that it's going to come out next week. Like they're going to do the announcement of Spartacus and do a whole like release thing of showing it and everything next week. And that they're not going to do like it's not going to release with the first party releases it's, day one. Their intentions is not to include their first party titles day one like Game Pass does. Um, it's more of a PlayStation Now, PlayStation Plus merger where everything's coming together and they're going to be adding a lot more PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4 titles, third party deals with other people like Xbox does, you know, with all the third party content coming onto the service. But the first party titles coming on day one is not something that's going to happen at least in the in the beginning of it. It might change in the future. Nobody knows, but it's not like the primary thing of it so people are now talking about is it even a competitor to game pass because it's not exactly the same type of service blah 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 blah. how do we feel let's let's make a judgment call right now spartacus pass or fail that's a very hard question no it's not mm, it is for me no no uh, that's I a think personal if, problem if, if <laughs> <laughs> If, if their intentions are to go directly 
like up against Xbox and Game Pass, then it's an instant fail. Without first party titles coming day one, you're not going to compete. This is just as simple as that. You can add all the third party stuff that you want, but without those first party titles dropping day one on the service, it is never going to be looked at in the same way that Game Pass is. It's just as simple as that. And 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 Tomaton, you're not getting out of this. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, yeah, like like I I I play PlayStation for the first party titles. I, I have my Xbox for everything else. So like I I don't. If they don't have the first party titles, I probably won't subscribe. So I don't I don't know. You know, I mean, and if they bring them on later, then I'll probably not buy them day one because I'll wait till they go on service. So it's kind of a catch twenty two. I don't know. Um, how it will do for them. I mean, that's surely that's what makes Game Pass so appealing, isn't it? Is that all of these games that they're making a day one on Game Pass? Like that's the main thing about it. And it's it's the best for multiplayer because I know all my friends have this game, so like we all jump on and play it. You know, it's yeah. like before it's like you got to convince your friend this game's gonna be good, and then maybe it's not. And networking issues, and it's a nightmare. You know, but like on Game Pass, everyone's got it. It's all you know free. Yeah, and, and the, the free yeah. argument, yeah. <laughs> And that and, annoys you know, me so much when they comment on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but we get all our games for free. It's like, you're I mean, there's some ways to game. Monthly. You're paying for it. Well, still, there's, not there's, free. Some, <laughs> there's some ways to game the system on that where you get it very, very cheap. But, um, but yeah, anyway, it's, it's, so I, so without that, you know, it is kind of tough. It's a tough sell to me, anyway. I just personally don't think hmm. Sony can afford to drop their games day one on there. They just, they're not Microsoft. They don't have this endless pit of money behind them backing this project. But like I think Sony they... needs that money from those first party games that we know make a ton of money. Like, look how much money God of War has made in the time that it released in 2018 up to now. It's made millions and millions of dollars. You drop that on a service that you're charging $5.99 a month for, you're going to instantly see that drop of cash. And unless you're willing to play the long-term game of gaining that money over a long period of time by increasing your subscribers, I just I just don't see him doing it. I think it's easy. This iteration of Spartacus is going to fail. And it's going to do so handedly. I, I truly believe that. But I say the first iteration... Because I think that they're putting it out from the time we heard that they were thinking about it to the time that we are now where we're talking about they're about to announce it. That's not long enough not to game plan this, I, I truly think. But the biggest reason, does anybody else here watch Michael Pactor or know of no. Michael Pactor? Mm -mm. Mike, Michael Pactor is a... a he's basically an analyst, but he <laughs> works for like Wed Bush, like basically like investment firm stuff like that he's always been a huge voice in gaming he knows everyone he does thing called the pactor factor which was with game trailers then moved to um sifted gaming now and he just takes questions from people and it's i like it because he's the business like the business dude of gaming but he also talks gaming because he enjoys gaming and he's done it his whole life he said that he believes it's going to fail. And he said the reason that he believes it's going to fail is that Microsoft made every deal possible to where they have, as any successful streaming service has done before, you basically gather a Bunch of product. Remember when I was telling you guys about product and content? You gather all the content possible and the, the, the amount of content you have at your disposal equals the success of your service. And Microsoft bought everyone. <laughs> almost. So they basically were able to do like Disney Plus where Disney... They got Star Wars. Well, you ain't beating that IP. They got Marvel. Yeah, you definitely ain't beating that. <laughs> like, especially right now, they bought Fox. The entire library of Fox. I mean, good Lord. <laughs> like, that's an insurmountable number of, con like, number of things, content, shows, everything. 
they have everything they need to put out a service and say, we have the content to make you stay subscribed. Now, not everybody's going to stay subscribed, but they, I mean, they have the deals with Activision or now they own them, but yeah, like, so anything like the whole history of, of Call of Duty and the future of it is going to be on Xbox. That's not, that's unless there's a pre-existing thing which they do have for the older games, but not newer ones. That's going to be on Xbox. That's not coming to PlayStation. Going on Game Pass, though. That the, that's the goal. Is Game Pass? Like. No, that's doesn't what I'm saying. Doesn't even matter if it's on. Doesn't even matter if all the new Call of Duty's release on PlayStation it makes no difference because it's going to be on Game Pass, and that's where yeah, you know, consumers so, look. Well, I could pay seventy dollars for it, or I could pay five ninety nine a month and have that along with everything else. Yeah, and so it's just because they have cornered so many so much of the gaming zeitgeist with their pocketbook it's gonna be hard for sony who yes has amazing first party titles that just in my opinion completely just destroy most of what you would find up until about a month ago or two months ago on game pass if you're a person that just likes the back catalog cool I'm not that person, but I can still look at Game Pass and be like, that's a lot. That's value. And so even when I was angry and ranting about how terrible Xbox One was, and it was, it was a terrible console. The only thing they, the only thing they did right was Game Pass. And the moment they started it, I was like, that's how you survive. They've already begun the race, the content race. I'm like, that's the most genius thing probably of the whole gen. No matter what console you're talking about. And it's showing it right now. Yeah, they got a lack of first party. But they've already bought all of the first party. So it's, it's, that's not going to be something anyone can say to them and hold any weight very soon. The no, moment- that's the thing. And, and it's because they have all of this money. They're like, well, if we can't make it, we'll buy it. And they, they have this bottomless pit of cash where, like, I mean, Jesus, Activision costs nearly $70 billion dollars. Like, they clearly have no issue with getting, you know, the Microsoft to hand out the checkbook and sign for these deals. So that's the thing. Like, you know, they don't have to worry about, well, we can't make content anymore. We'll just buy the publishers that do. And that way that will fill the service. Like, they have no issues because they have this bank of money that's never going to end. Yeah. But I do think, like I said, I think the first iteration, it's going to be rough. But I think once they start wheeling and dealing, which is what they've kind of been doing, like they've been purchasing and investing a lot in some of these things for the future, especially picking up Jade Raymond's studio Haven, mm-hmm. which is awesome. I, I like I, I want to know what they're working on, even though all you have to do is say live service and I go into a coma to avoid your game. But. You know, well, I mean, it was it was an, it was a wise move on, on yeah. PlayStation uh, to secure Jay because, like, you know, she's had success on multiple. Oh yeah, franchises. she's amazing. She's yeah, amazing. She knows she knows what she's doing. So to lock that down so early before Haven became successful and was worth a ton more money than what they probably paid for it, it was a wise yeah. move to make on their part. Very, very wise. Mm-hmm. So I, let's go ahead and finish this out with uh, Tomaton. Did you have something you want to? <laughs> I'm not sure. I feel like we've been talking. No, no. And, uh, it's okay. Okay, just make it sure. I don't want you to be sitting there like I'm just here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and my, <laughs> Dad keeps on yelling, and I don't know what to. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, OG Nigma said, how do you quantify success or failure? Since it's a replacement to PS Plus, it seems like most people have no choice but to transition to it. It's supposed to have multiple tiers. One of those tiers, yeah, three tiers, which means you can do PS Plus and still not do the full-blown Spartacus, which I don't know what the final name is. Hopefully, they've come up with something. PS Plus (laughs) Plus. Plus Squared. Plus squared. And so, you know, but the way I would quantify success or failure is the way they're going to. It's going to be what's the what's the benefit versus the cost? Like, like, is it going to be a service that people opt into doing as opposed to just working at the base PS plus model? And I, and and, and that's, that's where it comes down to. They don't have enough to offer yet, yet, but they will because 
I, we talk a lot about PlayStation as far as their marketing goes, mostly because we're salty about the way they've treated dreams and our opinions. But, <laughs> but I have to believe as a company that has existed longer than I've been alive, that they get it right at least twice a day, like a broken clock. Like they got it. Like I have to believe they're doing something and they, if I know and preach that the content, the content war is where we at. Somebody making a six-figure salary has to know, and if you know, you can make moves to counter it. But from hearing about Sony talking about a Game Pass competitor two months ago, maybe to them talking about it being launched next week. No, it was it was talked about a while ago. Oh. And, and that's and and that's only what we know publicly. You know, for all we know, yeah. they could have they could have been working on this for years. We did we don't know. We we don't. But if they've been working on it for years, they probably should have pulled the trigger before Game Pass came out. <laughs> <laughs> if well, you not, never know, they, they missed they the bus on that one. I mean, they might have been working on it since um, the launch of Game Pass. Who knows? You know, yeah, they might have saw that and went, "That's a great idea. Let's do it ourselves." Yeah. So, uh, let me see here. Uh, Captain Dex, yes, totally. This is a content race now, the Netflix model. Yeah. And Netflix killed TV with it, so this is the way it's going to be. Uh, Sock Wielder, seems like it's going to combine PS Now Plus and have some splashy titles. Seems like an improvement for PlayStation users. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Char, I don't know. Could we see Dreams in the future compete with Game Pass in terms of player base? Uh, you remember that Bubble Bath engine point like version two i was talking about yeah that'd be about v version three i think yeah i mean but, game pass is currently at like 20 million concurrent yeah. users dreams, so. will, <laughs> dreams <laughs> will, no, it's a big ask <laughs> well dreams will have to shift its its whole ui into something that actually markets more of the different areas of dreams to attack certain things like you know, it's going to have to have its YouTube section. It's going to have to have its Netflix section. It's going to have to be so highly curated to get to a point where we can talk about Because I do believe that it is the answer to Game Pass. It's just, it's not ready to take that mantle yet. But it will be, in my opinion. So, I put a I, lot I, in it. I agree. I think, I think that they should implement the Dreams surfing section into the freaking dashboard of playstation make it free and then just start selling the engine i mean where does where does that why does that sound familiar jammy why does that sound familiar it seems i've met my soulmate because <laughs> every once again that was another thing i said that everybody thought i was crazy everyone thought i was losing my mind i was like no that shit should Listen. be the mm -mm. I'm not trying to make any money on my game, but I want people to play it. Like I want as many people to play it as possible. And it's and dreams as a concept is a little confusing to a customer. It's like, it's an engine and it's a library of games. Like make the library of games, just a, like a thing. That's the last tab on the dashboard, make the whole, that the page of all the dream surfing and then sell the engine because people will see what it's capable of and be like, I want to, I want to play this. Meanwhile, you, you, I don't know how they're making these deals with like Ghostbusters and all that. Like, and you can make money on the being a marketing arm to Sony, and you know, I don't know. I definitely yeah. think a like an addition to the PlayStation Store would would be good, like a dream section. Like, and I've I've said that in the past, like a dream section on the PlayStation Store where you see all of the stuff, and it just requires dreams to play, it and it will launch it. Like something like that would be good. Um, but I think it needs to be directly on the PlayStation Store itself, not like sort of integrated with the dashboard. I think it would get very spammy very quickly if it was if it was in the UI. Like it just needs its own section in the store where people can click on it and see all of the Dreams titles. So you're saying it would have to be about at least Dreams plus 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 before plus we plus. can get to yes, before we can get to that point where it's in. Okay, yes, I got absolutely. I, yeah, I hear you. So <laughs> let's check in with with chat one last time because uh, something we said definitely sped up things a bit um let's see netflix blah 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 blah, blah. man gaming a uh, canadian jedi said man gaming is going to be a nightmare in 10 years possibly uh but i think at that point we won't have consoles anymore 
I think it would be simpler, to be honest with you. There'll, there'll just be, like, two main services, because eventually Sony and Xbox are just going to buy everything until there's nothing left, so then you no, just have uh, both uh, services, uh, and that's it. Uh, correct, correction. Xbox is just going to buy PlayStation. Well, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Problem. Uh, you know, which, which I don't mind. Like I tell people, the console war thing is dumb. All I care about is whether you're doing right by the gamer and as long as you're offering solid product. I don't care what console you play on. That's that's my stance. Dream Spartacus might be a great idea. It is. Uh, I will sell all of my dreams creations for $1 billion. Uh-oh. You NFTsing? NFTsing? Is that what's going on here? Oh, God. Uh, can you imagine if that came to dreams? Oh, it uh, has. It has. Uh, OG it the has. Enigma. I'm not going to talk about it. OG Ooh. the Enigma. Game Pass is too expensive to me to justify. It costs more than I'd spend on games in a typical year. So a pricing scheme like that alone will be a failure to me. I definitely can see that. Because I would say I'm the same type of person. I play games that I feel move the needle in gaming. That's it. Like, I don't play anything else. So, like, every console, I might play other games, like, at a friend's house to see them. If they're like, yo, you gotta try this, I'll go and check it out. But for me, my my gaming library has never been huge. I think my gaming library right now on PS5 is probably bigger than anything I've had in the past. It's just... Even though I haven't played them because of dreams. Anyway, so <laughs> so um, here we go. Uh, Captain Dax, yo Jedi, your character work lately has been sweet. I've seen your tweets and posts here and there. They have been, as per usual. It's Canadian Jedi. I mean, it's but, just Jedi. Yeah. I put off forcing myself to try and improve in that area for a long time. Did you? Did you, Jedi? Because I, I don't think I've ever not seen anything you've done that is specifically character work. Okay, maybe. Um, let me see here. Games are seventy dollars now. You buy four of them. That's well over three hundred dollars. As regarding what uh, OG the Enigma said about um, having that's, too that's, much. That's why I buy physical so I can swap them in once I'm done. They're too mm. expensive these days. Uh, Canadian Jedi. I mean, taxes and games are a hundred bucks each here these days. New. Are you in Australia? If you want to share that, <laughs> sure. I don't know if you want to make money using dreams, just make designs for print on demand and gain a bigger audience. Facts. Um, Canadian Jedi. They just released GTA online. Plus it's going to oh, be yeah. a nightmare. Oh my God. I don't even yeah. GTA a uh, subscription service for GTA. You're in, Can God. in Canada. It's a hundred. I feel like my friend in Canada would have said something. If that was the case, <laughs> there are a hundred each. Yeah, I mean, I know in Australia it Damn. gets crazy, but I didn't think it was Canada. Dang. I know your name, and yes, it would make sense that you're in yeah. Canada. But when you <laughs> said the price, it just immediately made me think Australia, because that's like double the price of everything else. Um, let me see. Char, until Disney buys Xbox and WB buys PlayStation, then there'll only be two companies left in the world. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I was scared of human characters. I'm nominated for Cave Bot's character design. Awesome. Um, let me see. After taxes. So trust me, $79.99, $89.99 for Sony. After tax, it's $100. Man, I don't know. That's that's an investment, isn't it? Yeah, I'd probably that, only own investment. dreams. <laughs> like I'd literally just be like, yo, I can't I can't front you, that cost real quick. You, you I gotta, gotta play really this. like gaming, like to, to yeah. drop a hundred on a game. Per usual, we went over our time though. So I wanna give yes. Tomaton <laughs> I wanna give Tomaton the, the time to say anything that you have left that you wanna talk about that I hope you had fun. I hope we yeah, didn't just great. bulldoze you. <laughs> yeah, we, no, we tend to get time. very excited with topics, and we just forget that people are there. It's just <laughs> Absolutely, I'm just as I'm just I get just as fired up about it, but I don't want to say anything controversial. So I'm trying to, be, you know, just being just no, chill, be but. controversial. We controversial. I don't, I don't have anything specific. I'm just saying, like, you we know, I just... feed off of that. That's what we love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because then uh, if we disagree with the controversy, then we can come back in and have a real good conversation. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think probably the most controversial thought is, is I think they should make dream shape, dream, dreams. What am I? I'm blanking on it. Dream playing, uh, dream surfing. 
part of the dashboard. It's a first party studio. Like, take advantage of it. I think the biggest thing Sony has going for it is the, the PSVR and Dreams. It's the th and, and their first party amazing titles. You know what I mean? And it's just like lean into it. Like, use the things that you have at your disposal. Make it part of the ecosystem, you know, and then and then like Dreams is an engine. I feel like it'll market better if you sell it as an engine for making co Dreams on like games on console, and then make those games free. Yep. I, I don't, I can't this. even get it. I don't even know I what's said like this. They are sitting on a marketing gold mine. They yeah. can literally say we are the only console in existence that you can create whatever game you want within certain limits and publish it to our store <laughs> like steer, like you know you can't make an mmorpg let's just get that out there you're not going to make the next skyrim online like it's not going to happen hey, but they might you never know with with bubble bath too it's possible but still like you know if if they they could just market this like we are the ps5 and the ps4 is a game making console like mm -hmm. it's, they're just sitting on a gold mine of marketing material and it's just such a shame that they don't do it but Yep, we've already absolutely. we've talked far too much about marketing at Sony and why they should push streams on many episodes. Yeah, which is yeah, why... anyway, that's yeah. that's my my controversial contribution um but like <laughs> I, I want to thank you guys for having me and, Oh no, thank uh, you for coming on. Yeah, and 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 everyone listening like if you play the game just let me know what you think. I love to I love all the comments and stuff so I you know I'm always trying to improve you know, so no uh no comments to me, and I'll, I'll incorporate it into my next, uh, you know, project. Again, that's chaotic good, and also Mandalorian conviction on dreams. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of today's journey, and uh, we'll see you next week. We are going to be doing a show just the two of us, and then I have to do Keld's show on that on the third. That's right. But yeah, so basically next week will be uh, just the two of us and we'll probably have open lines again through our Discord uh, so that we can take calls and questions. I think we should make it a QA. and a A Q and a would be good. I think that would yeah. be great. All right. I expect you, if we make it a QA, and a I expect you guys to actually call in and ask us questions. If Bring not, the Qs, we'll deliver the As. Yeah, there we go. So we'll do a QA and a next week, uh, next Friday. And um, and uh, we can talk about anything you want to talk about. Uh, other than that, don't forget, as Cynic put, enjoy the impies on Sunday. Mm, Make sure you check in. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I won't be uh, doing anything ridiculous and not be able to watch it. But everybody make it because it's going to be a great time. And uh, <laughs> we'll we'll continue to hold on to that little thread. That <laughs> that little, yeah, that little gleam of hope. <laughs> yeah, the little thread that stuck to like Elka and Saku's shoe. Like, we'll, <laughs> we'll <laughs> <laughs> Canadian Jedi, uh, I think you're most definitely going to pull one out. But even if not, take our stance. Yeah, you're just a to be not. Yeah, just to be nominated is fantastic. And picking nominations was a, had to be a nightmare. It had to be. It had to be. Everybody in Dreams contributes. For those that didn't see that little clip I put out on Twitter about that, yeah, it's it's back there. You'll have to search for it now. But everybody contributes. Everybody is important. You're given the opportunity to actually put your work out there, and Dreams is amazing. Never forget it. All right? So, Love it. So here we go. We're out. See you next week. Bye. You waved, Tomaton. Did you want to actually say bye? I, I don't want to no, cut you oh, off. Bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to step on anything. <laughs> well, we're out. <laughs>